if you love camp <laughs> or hate it. The food bites, bugs bite, activities bite, everything bites. Watch Salute Your Shorts weekdays at 5.30, 4.30 Central on Nickelodeon. Get it right or pay the price, gut buckets. This is Big Orange Couch, the 90s Nickelodeon podcast, where we talk about all things 90s Nickelodeon. My name's Joey. I'm Andrew. And I'm John. And this is episode number 257. We're talking Salute Your Shorts Season 2. Yeah, our, 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 our definitive kind of thoughts on Season 2. Um, we've, we've discussed Sponge Goes to the Movies. Yeah. And I'm not sure we've discussed anything else. Uh, the man who would be Ugg. Oh, thank you, thank you. The man who would be Ugg, of course. Yeah, that. And then you did. Uh, did you do the cursed I... skull on Splat Attack? Yes. Okay. Not that. Okay. That, that could be it. That could be what? Uh, the only episodes we've discussed. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I thought you were saying the cursed skull is the only episode oh. that matters. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll find that's not true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They all matter. Uh, yeah. Uh, and John, welcome to the podcast for the first time. We're so pleased to have you. Hey, thanks, guys. This is, uh, this is a bucket list item. It's great to be here. <laughs> um, before we even get going, w- w- what could you share with us and our listeners uh, as you've never been on before? Yeah. So uh, let's say, so I found, so... Uh, like Justin, I think who, who did your season one actually mm. found you guys with your Sarah Madre review. Oh, um, I'm, wow. <laughs> I think I, I think I'm proud. I think I'm proud to be your number six iTunes review. Oh, um, wow. nice. I've been a, I've been a very passive member of the BOC community, but I've closely followed followed you. But uh, like every other person in the 2010s, I wanted to start my own podcast and. Uh, found yours and you inspired me to not start one because yours was way better than anything i could do so uh um anyway i've followed you ever since grew up on nickelodeon and um there's kind of that break i think i think joey you mentioned there's like the earlies the mids and the lates of the 90s and i kind of crossed the early and the mids like yeah I, t- I tell people Nickelodeon was my babysitter growing up, <laughs> so I did have good parents, but I watched yeah. it a lot and salute your shorts in particular. It's my brother's about five years older than me. So it's one of those shows that kind of crossed both our areas and we mm. bonded over. So um, anyway, y- you guys, you guys discuss it. It's like I jump into with my friends talking about it. So that's why I've, I've stuck with you guys. You do a great job. Oh, uh, appreciate you. that. Yeah. Um, do, do so I you know we we never really ask our guests this but I think it is an interesting question. Do you have pals or friends who would discuss Nickelodeon with you or do you find cuz some people say I listen to you because my friends would never uh-huh. uh, talk about Nickelodeon. <laughs> so, so actually I was just I was thinking about it. I think I had more conversations with my brother about it because yeah. by the time I really established my friend group middle school whatever you kind of pass that age where you watch nickelodeon on a regular basis yeah and so they may have watched it some but by that time you're playing nintendo 64 and goldeneye and you know moving on to other things so i don't think i really discussed it a lot and now i live across country where i grew up so don't really see a lot of my uh friends growing up so in short no I, I, i never really talked about it with any of my friends okay okay um and andrew uh salute your shorts season two did you have any before kind of getting this list ready did you have any general uh, feelings about it i had some feelings the old there's only maybe there's only a couple that like i knew where they were going more or less hmm. um but i i I found this to be pretty difficult, mostly because I just like all the episodes so much. Um, like I was going through, it felt like each episode I watched, I was like, "Oh, this has got to be a top one." <laughs> um, but but the uh, bottom like four on my list were pretty set, I think, from the yeah. from the get go. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I had a I had two where I felt pretty secure. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but to me, this up this season is a little bit more, you know. And I know, I know, I love using this word, but it's a little more middling than the first. Mm, it's a roller me. coaster, up and down. It is. There, there are some. There are some. Yeah, I know, there's only 26 episodes, but there are some <laughs> all timers in this uh, second season. But to me, it's definitely not as consistent. Um, and yeah. They they try I get that they try some things in the season that are almost experimental, yeah. But I don't know if they really work. Yeah, I mean I guess you're right. Um, I mean the fir- it's hard to beat the first season, but with the uh, addition of Pinsky, it's just got like its own distinct yeah. feel for sure. Um, and I, I do like I do like it a lot, just like in it in what it as what it is. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, one thing I jotted down that I noted about the season is there's just a lot less focus on torturing Ugg, I feel like. <clears throat> and that is something I liked about the first season. I kind yeah. of liked Ugg as less their ally and more their, you know, this obstacle. Um, yeah. In, a lot, in I mean, a lot of this season, they're kind of like on his side. Yeah, I agree with you. I think there's some <laughs> big standouts mm. of... Uh, Ugg being the bad guy, but <laughs> but I feel what you're saying. Yeah. Well, and and I think this. I mean, let's get the elephant in the room out. Michael and Pinsky here. I, mm-hmm. I went back and I listened to your your grab bag on it, and I mean the reason why I suggested this is I'm a big Pinsky guy, uh, far beyond salute your shorts and into the music realm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love yeah. what Blake Sennett's done, yeah. but what I will say after watching this is. While I love Pinsky, I think Michael is just a better fit in the show because he's an every kid, yeah. right? And like he, he kind of represents that. And so I do think you miss a little bit out on that. I love Pinsky and his addition, but you kind of miss that sort of every average kid in there where you've got a bunch of characters who have their own kind of quirks and standouts. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew, are you still team Michael? Um. I mean, I really love them both, like, just for different reasons. I think, you know, who's more essential? I don't know. I, I'm not even sure I can really say. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I think I think they did a better job writing for Michael's character. Yeah. Like, I think his storylines were more suited, and I feel like I never quite got a feel for who Pinsky... I, I get that he was kind of like a blasé camper he's indifferent to being there but i don't feel like they ever nailed his tone hmm. and and i was reading so pinsky was like a last minute addition it was hmm. michael backed out of the show like last minute was kind of i guess had some uh breakdown or, or sort of stress and so stepped out of the show pinsky was actually brought in to play another character which when we get to that episode i'll, I'll make note of it Hmm. But I guess they just kind of kept him around. So it seems like he was a last minute right in anyway. So maybe that's why he's not as developed. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think there's, I will say, I think there's a couple episodes that do get the sense of him pretty yeah. well, but, yeah. but I can get into it. Um, I do want to also add though, that I just looking over my um, season one rank, um, I think I mean, I might say that my season one bottom episodes are not as good as my season two bottom episodes. Wow. What were, will you remind me? What were your bottom on season one? Yeah. Um, Cinderella play the environmental party and brownies for Thud Mackie. Oh my God. Okay. So, (laughs) okay. So the environmental party is, I think the worst episode of salute your shorts. Agreed. with with a contender from this season but uh brownies for thud mackie being your yeah. worst episode is like bonkers just, on a level i it, <laughs> it feels okay it feels like it doesn't fit in the way that my bottom episodes for this season don't feel like they don't fit in that it's like what why do we need thud mackie we have uh bud nick already it just feels like a weird um like shoehorned in episode to me i don't know so, so it's funny you say that without giving too much away i feel like they tried to do that several places in this season and introducing mm. new characters and yeah. 
a lot of those new characters, I think you could have used the attributes of the current campers. And so that's what kind of, sure. that's probably yeah, yeah. what brought me away from some of these episodes. It's like, well, why did you have that person in when we're never going to see him again? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I did love Thud Mackey, by the way. So okay. imagine, right. imagine a world, just... Andrew, where you didn't know the name Thud Mackey. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't really. It always felt like the odd man out episode to me of that season. I, I just hmm. never connected with it. Okay. Yeah. Cinderella play. I could understand a little bit more. It's it's though. Conceptually, I think it's a good idea for the camp to have a play. I felt like they missed kind of missed it I, I mean even now i can barely uh conjure anything from any of those episodes mm. well, the, i just the, can't the, think of any the wrapping moments. the wrapping donkey lips in cinderella <laughs> play you can't forget that <laughs> yeah, um yeah that is good i do want to make just one note before we start getting into the specific episode so i don't <clears> have to just repeat it over and over again <clears> and i can't remember if i maybe brought this up on the season one ranking or not but it also, the season seems a little too preoccupied with how hot Dina is. <laughs> and as a child, as a child, I didn't disagree. I thought Dina was very attractive, but as an adult, I'm now acutely aware that adults are writing these episodes and it just <clears throat> makes me a little itchy how much time they spend <laughs> being like, Dina's so freaking hot. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of the season. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, <laughs> Yes, I see what you're saying. My my guess is that some of the writers were like, that's her character. And like, that's all they could come up with. You know? <laughs> yeah. I okay. mean, she's, she may not be very dynamic beyond that, uh, but I, I'd agree. I, I think if you're thinking, so I, I, the only summer camp I experienced was a Boy Scout camp. So a little different, Yeah. but inevitably you find that one instructor who's a female, who's, who's, who's really the only female so everyone thinks oh that person is so attractive and i think that's kind of dina's role here since they're at a secluded summer camp someone's got to play that role and she's it yeah, yeah. i can yeah i can understand that um i can i can get that um i do want to mention also one other thing about this season yeah. um the reference to kent flankman like him coming oh, yeah. up occasionally throughout. <laughs> uh, really enjoy that. He, so he was in episode that. one, even. It, yeah. If you yeah. follow it, and he, yeah. and I thought that's that's a Pete and Pete character. Turns out he was in Pete and Pete. Ah, well, who was he in Pete and Pete? Uh, he plays, I think Henry. I didn't watch the episode. I just looked it up yeah. on IMDb. Okay, he plays Henry, which is his real name. My guess is he's a background kid, but it's yeah. primarily in season two and three. He's got a great face. I mean, he does. He's, he's got yeah. one of those faces. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> plus the name. Like, that's a name I can get behind. Ken Flankman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds a little better than Thud Mackey to me. But. And uh, at the end of the season, I mean, Donkey Lips really befriends him, right? I mean, he's, yeah. in, he's in the Donkey oh, yeah. Lips crew. <laughs> <laughs> Donkey Lips crew. That's the, la the last shot of Salute Your Shorts is Donkey Lips and these, like, three other random campers walking <laughs> into the distance. I'm like, this is kind of a perfect way to end it. <laughs> Maybe Donkey Lips um, has found a crew that actually likes him. I do want to later quibble with that being the last episode, but I don't want to ink. We'll get to it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, well yeah. Who knows? Who knows? And, and and as last time, there's some of these have two episode names. Well, I, yeah. I think there's one episode that, like, to me, seems like it absolutely was meant to be the last episode, mm, uh, but just didn't air that way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, it, it, one uh, other thing real quick I'll mention too. I never paid attention to how much use of the handheld video camera there is. It happens in season one too, but it makes mm. like an appearance four mm. or five times that they love. <laughs> and, and those were cool growing up, but yeah. boy, they really feature that camera a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Um, well, do we want to get into it? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So the first episode in the season, goodbye, Michael. Hello, Pinsky. You trying to make me look like an idiot out there at baseball? No, you were doing a fine job of that yourself. Come on, you move. Let me talk to you. Hi, I'm Ronnie Pinsky. Hi, I'm Sponge. Donkey Lips. Welcome to camp. You must be the new kid. With that arm, new and improved. I'm Dina Alexander of New York Alexanders. Well, you must already know who I am. Hold on a minute. 
I think we have a very serious problem in our bunk. You know what? You are absolutely right. I forgot to bring mustard. <laughs> mustard for what? A snack. Would you mind going and getting that football for me? <laughs> Thanks. He's gonna put mustard on a football? I never tried that. <laughs> hey, nice throw. You know, if you snap your wrist a little more, it'll spiral better. You know, guys, most camps have uh, rules against bringing in outside food. But you know what? I don't like rules. Thus, ladies and gentlemen, I come bearing gifts. Yes. Behold. Yes. The famous Pinsky salami. <laughs> the most delicious meat or meat byproduct known to man. <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah. What an episode. What an episode. Oh, yeah. Um, God, I, I feel like I'm really going to be upsetting to people here uh -oh. with my orders. Well, hold on. So before yeah. we before we even get into it, the plot here, uh, Michael has con contracted chicken pox and will not be returning to camp. However, Ronnie Pinsky has arrived to take his place, much to Budnick's chagrin. Yeah. Um, general thoughts. Let's talk about our general thoughts here. Uh, I love this episode. I can't believe how well they replaced Michael. Um, I love the idea of the new kid showing up and Pinsky just such a force from the first moment. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. Yeah. That whole scene there just, you know, he walks in with such confidence, really, r really the Pinsky being introduced to the camp by watching yeah. the kids play baseball and, you know, just in a comical way. And then him kind of stepping up and throwing out Budnick. It's just, it's hard to believe they didn't have this plan planned out totally because it seems yeah. like they really were ready for <laughs> this character. I, I love the line as they're walking in. Hug tells them, Hey, I'm almost a gym teacher. I could probably work out a routine for you. As he talks about <laughs> his back spasm. There's, there's a couple of times Ugg makes references to his partially completed gym teacher education. It's good. Yeah. And starting with uh, Michael's funeral is a funny bit. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know, the slow yeah. march. <laughs> yeah, um, I also love Pinsky as just a rival to Budnick, mm -hmm. like that didn't exist before. Um, uh, also, you know what this episode does really well it, in like a sly way is re it, it, in the clip that we just listened to is reintroduce all the characters mm. that are there already. Yeah, you know? like you almost don't even notice. Do do you think this episode? I mean, clearly it's been another year. Uh, they yeah. have they have all grown up. Do you think in the series this is supposed to represent a new year at camp or a continuation of the first year? Because it kind of feels like every you know everyone's still been going, and Michael gets chicken pox, and all suddenly he's Pinsky. But mm. I mean, they've really grown since year one. Yeah, I I interpreted it as the next year. Okay, in camp. Yeah, I, I I think I did too. Um, uh, also, uh, Pinsky, his ability to win over Ugg at first, like, uh, and finally in the end of the episode, I love um, that that piano scene mm. after he sneaks out. There's a sneaking out of the the bunk scene, <laughs> yeah. which uh -huh. is always great. Yes, sneaking out. Yeah, you're right. They they kind of they play the hits here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You get the yeah. odd physical yeah. comedy scene too, as he's trying to wash his face off with that soap. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, a and him carrying the all of Pinsky stuff is a oh, yeah. yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. As Pinsky <laughs> just kind of strolls, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, we have Pinsky salami here, yeah, which, oh, which yeah. is Nickelodeon canon, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, <laughs> uh, just so crazy that they did this, yeah. but um, also just a really great like physical item like yes. it, it kind of characterizes pinsky in some way you know yeah he's the type of kid that <laughs> sneaks this kind of yeah. weird food into camp absolutely um also it's a great prop like watching them all yeah. eat it throughout yeah. the episode uh, yeah oh, wa watching ugg eat it on that couch at the end like <laughs> swinging his legs like a little kid oh man that's so good yeah, and there's there's something about finding out that Ugg loves salami that feels really mm. uh, just satisfying to me. I guess <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, 
also finally like the the final shot of this episode too like uh budnick bringing everything back around to the first episode of the series putting pinsky's Mm -hmm. um, shorts up on the pole but then like you know the opposite happens instead of being upset about it it's like pinsky's the new king of camp yeah he owns it (laughs) yeah yeah that is good they what's they establish all these things in episode one and they do it a couple times through the season, but then the next episode, it's like they completely wipe the slate and none of that <laughs> mattered. So then like Budnick and Penske are going to be great friends. And I don't, it, it's, it's kind of interesting how like each episode is kind of like a reset, but yeah, I think yeah. This, this was, this was a great way to kick off season one. As you mentioned, like it has a lot of the hits that we all like Budnick's back to being a bully, you know, Ugg's Ugg, and you've got this new cool kid. Donkey Lips just has some killer lines like that mustard on a football one. Man, I love that one. The, the other one that just got me is when Ugg comes in and uh, he asks him, how come you have a jock strap on your face? He goes, protection. He goes, I guess I don't understand how jock strap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, but, yeah, uh, the whole, yeah. The whole quarantining thing yeah. uh, felt good. You know, it just felt like an appropriate thing. And, uh, and Pinsky's whole spraying ug with the ketchup and i don't know it all feels good for sure so there's there's 13 episodes of this first season so i think we did this the same as i'm sorry i'm sorry thank you of the second season i think we did this the same as the first season where we just kind of picked where we'd rank it one through 13 right yeah all right so andrew where where are you ranking goodbye michael halopinski and there's something in my gut right now that's telling me you're gonna say this is number one this is my number one pick. <laughs> oh my oh. God. I love it so <laughs> much. Is, wow. It's the, it, to me, it's the most essential episode mm. of this season. Like, it just like somehow sets this new tone and it works unbelievably. Um, I just love it so much. The, is this the, is this a yeah. top five all time for you? Uh, pro- let me just glance at my first season, but I think probably... Uh, yeah, I think it would be. <laughs> wow. Okay, <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. Uh, you've always really liked this. It episode. just feels like I don't know. To me, it it feels like the defining episode of the season, like the one that I just could not be removed uh, without, like, totally messing things up Mm. okay all right wow andrew's favorite episode right off the bat goodbye michael hello pinsky of the season uh by the way this episode has an 8.7 on imdb which is very very good it's actually not the highest scoring episode of the season but um and i should say on patreon nobody selected this as their favorite episode of season two i'm afraid okay i'm sorry uh Um, (laughs) john uh uh, where, where are you placing goodbye michael hello pinsky yeah so this was so mostly as you guys do your podcast i listen to you and reflect upon the nostalgia of episodes and mm. i don't watch a ton mm. so i had to watch this t- like two times through because i felt like i was pretty harsh on it at first and then i watched it again i'm like okay this is better than i think so um i i gave them all crab stars just so i could kind of rank them but yeah, yeah i gave this one i i 4.25 it ended up number six on my list. Wow, number it's, six. Uh, it's it's not bad. It, it's totally rewatchable. I do have an un uh, a tier that like I just wouldn't go back and rewatch. Mm. This this had a high standard to meet when compared to the welcoming Michael to camp. Um, I thought they did a great job and it establishes Pinsky really well. Um, but it it's kind of like these three distinct acts in in this in the show and they do kind of connect i I just you know first they go from welcome penske to the quarantine to the dance and i and i guess they connect them well but it just wasn't my one of my favorites of the season but still a solid episode okay uh well i'll split the difference here this was my third favorite Mm, of the season so you know if we take once one three six here our average is third um and uh yeah i think it's a perfect way to start the new season if you're going to replace michael you know centering around pinsky is 
good and kind of you know, what we were saying. They seem like they are doing the Salute You Shorts hits here with um, a lot of like the baseball and the sneaking stuff into camp and sneaking out of the cabins yeah. and, you know, a lot of Ugg antics. Um, so this seems like a good representation of what Salute Your Shorts is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it, I think they kind of nailed it as an opening episode, but it's not... There are two episodes here that I think are... Well, Andrew, you can argue with me. They're inarguably better. Uh, well, I I mean, trust me, like, I... There's two episodes that I know are every... That are, like, top episodes that probably would have been for me had I not gone through through and rewatched them mm-hmm. um like they're they contain some of like the most memorable things but mm-hmm. uh i think upon for the <laughs> deeper reflection like yeah they just aren't as strong as some others gotcha okay okay well should we move to the next episode sure um episode two the man who would bobby be like bobby Butnick, you Butnick. are a lucky man I hereby crown you counselor for the weekend. My first official duty as camp counselor is to check the inventory of the sodas in the pantry. See ya. Well, if he's the counselor, then that makes me a camper. Hey, Pinsky. You need some salt on your corn. Thanks. Zizi? That little mustard on your burger. Mmm, man. Tally, try some ketchup. It's very good ketchup. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh! Oh! I've waited all year to do that. I haven't had this much fun since Dr. Khan found a lizard in his eggnog. No, I can't. Anyway, uh, I love, I love the, um, Salute Your Shorts transition music. The ba-da-da. Oh, yeah. but there's so many great cues throughout and and i don't know if you caught it but there is an episode where we get the zeke the plumber music Ooh, oh i don't know i have a guess for the episode but i don't know i okay all right i'll let you know when we get there okay uh all right what do you make we we talked about this episode last year um yeah after uh uh, kirk bailey's unfortunate passing Uh, but i guess you know we can kind of hit it again here this episode is upside down weekend uh, one of the campers right. will take Ugg's place as counselor. Unfortunately, that camper is Budnick, who soon becomes a tyrant. Uh, this episode's also known as Counselor Budnick. Yeah. Um, I prefer the man who would be Ugg, I think. Yes. We maybe mm-hmm. agreed on that. Um, but uh, Budnick as Ugg, Ugg as Budnick. Perfect setup. Um, I, I love just Ugg's, like... <sighs> Ugg turning into a camper. I love to watch. Mm-hmm. He just like revels in it so much. It's so funny. Um, but I also love Bud Nick slowly like taking the whole role more seriously. Ends up doing that paperwork that one night, like late into the night. Yeah. <laughs> um uh yeah, I this is one that like moved up for me, uh actually Ooh. this morning as I was going wow. through the list. Okay. You good. Uh, you guys are pretty harsh on this episode when you reviewed it all alone. Uh really I mean I I did look Not back. Harsh, I gave but... it like a four four and a half, so I feel like that was pretty good. Oh but oh maybe it's maybe it's is it is Joey then. It could be. Uh yeah, I this is not one of my favorite episodes God. of the season. I don't know how you could not enjoy it. It's just <laughs> like every scene with either of them as their opposite uh cracks me up. It's just so good. It's it's you know, it does something a lot of this season does, which it has kind of this good concept that feels by the end so dragged out that mm-hmm. it maybe should not have justified a whole episode or there should have been a stronger B story. Uh, I mean, there's a lot going on in it, but I think it all gets wrapped up pretty nicely uh, by the end. Huh. I, I mean, the episode alone, because it features Ugg, and anytime you can have him at the forefront, it's great. So I think his greatest moments a- actually happen in the episodes he's not featured a lot because he just like comes in and kills it. And wa- it's like a walk off, like every yeah. time. But uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I 
I think I do like Ugg the Counselor better than Ugg the Camper. And that's what mm. I was missing through this episode is like, I just, I want to see Ugg as his goofy self rather as his prankster self, but it was still really good. And I, I like the concept of it, but yeah, just, I just found, I missed Kevin Lee. What can <laughs> I say? Understandable. I mean, that's, yeah, I think that's how I felt as well. Um, it's, and it's not a bad episode. It's, it's like a no. perfectly suitable salute I, your shorts episode. I think it contains, as I'm looking at my list, I think it contains one of the things that like I apparently uh, am drawn to, which is like full, uh, full camper involvement episodes mm, yeah where it's yeah. just like everybody kind of in a crazy situation and it's like flipping back and forth yeah between everybody um it just feels like really fast and kinetic or something uh, so i don't know i like that john any other thoughts on this one uh not much just i have to share my favorite line in this which is i gave sponge a wedgie it was like a wedgie and a melvin combined it's a Mervin. Ugg gave Sponge a Mervin. I just, I, I don't know what I, I mean. My brother and I would, would quote it back to one another. I don't know how Wedgie and Melvin make Mervin, but it is just great. That is good. And especially how Donkey Lips delivers that line. It's just uh, something's <laughs> yeah. really special about that. Um, all right. Uh, well, this episode has an 8.8 .8 on IMDb. Yeah. And two people voted it as their favorite of the season. Nice. Um, well, I, uh, I find, it was a little lower my, on my list before this morning, but as I was going through them, it made its way to number three for me. Wow. <laughs> um, it's just such a fun episode. So fast paced. Uh, with the upside down weekend thing like i think they used that really well in that it's just like this thing going on in the background that they don't like hey they don't give that much attention to after the first scene but it just like keeps popping up in really interesting ways i think um mm -hmm. yeah to me it just feels like a full episode it may be like gets a little over complicated but i give them credit for how well i think it all wraps up in the end um yeah i don't know i i love see also i just love seeing ugg in the bunk like interacting with them in there hmm. like <laughs> just being wacky um yeah i don't know it, it, to me it's just a fun really fun episode yeah john so i gave this episode a four crab stars a solid episode what ended up number eight on my list um as i mentioned it like it's great it features ugg you get to you do get to see him shine in sort of a different type of role and something we'll never see again in another episode which is which is interesting but like some other episodes in in this season the b storyline of warp breath just isn't my favorite you guys did a great job breaking that down in your your episode review but it, just isn't strong and kind of seems out of place and you know the, the fact that that kind of is the thing that brings it brings them all back together and puts everyone in their proper roles just seems to miss a little bit um certainly ending with kent flakeman with his hand glued to his head not that any of us can see it because it just goes to black yeah. <laughs> but uh um anyway a, a, a good solid episode one other thing i'll say is i, I do like budnick in this role but just like Ugg as, as Counselor Ugg, I like Budnick as Bully Budnick. He, he's, he's best in that role. So it's funny to see him serious for a little bit, but uh, I, I'd prefer him up to his antics more. Yeah, and they're trying that a lot this season with Budnick mm -hmm. being different archetypes, you know, like yeah, whether it's yeah. romantic or serious, dramatic. Mm -hmm. um, they definitely seem to think he's the guy worth focusing on quite a bit. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I, I also made this was also my eighth uh, out of thirteen. Jeez. So uh, yeah, just not. It's not a again not a bad episode, but it doesn't. Mm. I don't think it totally delivers on the premise. It doesn't end up feeling as maybe as exciting as it should. And, yeah. Uh, you know, not the worst episode of the season, but you know, a three and eight and an eight would put it a little over six. Uh, so you know maybe kind of right there in the middle yeah okay 
<laughs> too too low, but <laughs> too low. that's fine. Um, I you know I will say just to reiterate, like my top nine, I feel like I love all these episodes. Mm. Um, okay, so I don't know. You guys, it sounds like you guys are being a little harder on these. <laughs> I, I would say I'd say the top nine for me like are in the rewatchable category. Mm. I think there's a clear bottom that's like I don't really want to touch those episodes again. But I'd agree, like the top nine, especially in the middle, like you could really flip like eight and five, right? They, I mean, they all kind of float in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? I'll, I guess I have to agree with you. Yeah. All right. Anticlimactic. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Where are we going next? Uh, episode number three is Telly and the Tennis Man. I hate that kid. I hate his smile. I hate his hair. And I hate the way he walks. How could I lose to him? Well, he's right, though. I mean, if you're ever going to beat him, you need a new racket. You want to use mine? <laughs> the apocalypse? Yeah, I mean, it's made with the same stuff they built the space shuttle with. Here, try mine. It's recycled graphite from old miniature golf pencils. Hey, Bunnick, what's your racket? Mostly candy. But I do a few fake ideas, too. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, that line. That is such a good line. Um, this episode here, Telly and the tennis match. After Telly loses a tennis match to Scotty Rex, great name. She yeah, blames her good. inferior racket and is given a new one by Budnick. However, the gift will come with a price. Did, did you see Scotty Rex's real name? No. It's Peter Ferrari. I mean, come on. You can use either one of those. Peter Ferrari. Wow. Peter Ferrari. Yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> Man, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, well, I personally feel this is a weaker episode of the season. Um, I do like the Budnick Godfather thing. Yes, yeah. Uh, it feels you know, totally appropriate for him and just like a good use of his character. Um, and I do like the collecting ants hmm. going on in the background. Uh, okay. I'm not um, sure about that. Mm, that that's one thing that always stuck with me, especially Ugg, um, getting, you know, uh, yeah. the ants falling on him and him <laughs> eating them. And I, I, I'm not sure I can get on board with Spun saying he's trying to create a master race of something. I was a little <laughs> uncomfortable with that. Um, I just think, uh, I think the main storyline is a little slow, though. Um, and, and, you know, I, if you uh, check out IMDb or Wikipedia or whatever, it, there's a claim that this was going to be uh, Blake Sennett's character originally, yeah, yep, and then he got yep. picked up for the series. And I can totally feel that. And I feel mm -hmm. like th maybe he wasn't around yet, but... I feel like uh, it should have been Pinsky instead of uh, mm. Scotty Rex. It just yeah. like feels like it was made for that. And then they like, you know, watered it down a little bit. Yeah. Plus Pinsky is kind Pinsky is really the boy version of Telly. Like he's really into sports. Yeah. He's yeah. yeah. Very it would have been perfect for him. Yeah. yeah the, the, the fact he's not even in the episode at all is really strange. It's yeah. kind of, it's like, wait a second. Wait, you watch it. Like, wait, where's Pinsky? Yeah. But I agree that this is a, one of those times where it's like, well, you have this other character you brought in. I know we're supposed to really dislike Scotty Rex, which he does an excellent <laughs> job of, by the oh, way. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. He's he's so <laughs> unlikable. But you could have put Pinsky in that role and he would have he would have functioned very similar to where yeah. he could be in sort of this opposite force telly. Uh, but uh, but yeah, like I <laughs> did you notice how many times or how much of the episode is just tennis shots and how they play the same ones over and over <laughs> again. So yeah. it got, I timed it is three minutes and 22 seconds of nothing wow. but tennis shots in this episode. Wow. <laughs> and it just was, yeah, yeah. Grinding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this was, I mean, Andrew, you mentioned slow, like this whole storyline of the tennis racket. Can't say I'm a big fan of the ants either, but Nick is what really saves the episode. The whole Godfather thing is just great. Um, we do get the camp store in this one. I don't think there's any other. Yes, reference. that is nice. Yeah. It makes me think Budnick's been selling candy. Couldn't have just bought it from the camp store this whole time. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 
it's it's a slow episode. I I think it has kind of an interesting premise, but it feels it it, it takes its sweet time and yeah. uh it ends up feeling a little anticlimactic cuz of course, you know, like mm-hmm. of you know, this whole climax of Telly throwing the tennis match to make Budnick, you know, successful and then her ultimately finding it within herself to, you know, be prideful feels like boy this was a long lead up to something that seemed kind of inevitable yeah Mm -hmm. um also it's one of those uh, for me one of the episodes that like it's so focused on a couple characters that everybody else sort of feels like they get pushed off to the side yeah which uh are just Mm -hmm. is not my favorite dynamic for the show yeah agreed I think I think you two mentioned in like the, the Zeke the Plumber episode where Budnick's going through the woods and he has the hello kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Like it's unforgettable. <laughs> Same with this episode. Like this episode is largely forgettable. But when Budnick at the end is going, miss it. Miss yeah. it. <laughs> I found myself doing that in everyday life. <laughs> that is good. Yeah, that is good. Um, all right. Well, this episode has a seven point eight on IMDb, which is the lowest of the season. Mm. Um, nobody on Patreon picked it as their favorite. Uh, where did Shout you rank? Patreon. <laughs> where did you pick, where did you rank this out of thirty? Um, I do want to just say again, like I wouldn't kick it out of my line. Like I like that it's there in the mm-hmm. show. Um, but it's my number thirteen pick. Wow. Uh, yeah. Man. I mean it's not it's not high for me, but I didn't expect it to be your last. Yeah, it just feels like again, no Pinsky. Feels like that character was made for Pinsky. Uh again, the slow moving storyline. It just and it's close to my number twelve. Like those were neck and neck for the last place, but ultimately this one felt like it just had the least to offer me mm. in terms of the season. Okay. So I gave this one three point two five crab stars. Finished number eleven for me. Mm. Okay. I think I right at the bottom. Again, sort of that tier where I wouldn't really watch it again. I would have loved to see Budnick's Godfather storyline be the primary (laughs) storyline. Like if he's getting into a lot of dealing across camp, would have been great if this was a a minor storyline. The whole Ant thing, it was, I mean, it wasn't memorable. I I don't remember much from this episode outside of Budnick being sort of the Godfather type character. So I just, I mean, again, Scotty Rex, love to hate him. There's some memorable moments and uh quotes in this one but as a whole just not a just not a rewatchable memorable episode for me so number 11 yeah um yeah i gotta I, i'm gonna have to serve scotty rex a big bowl of loser soup here uh, <laughs> this is this is my number 10 um i do i do think that uh the the godfather part is very very memorable one of the more memorable scenes honestly of the second season mm. um and i think the way the episode starts is like lively enough i think it loses its pace but you know not not at all a great episode so with a 13 11 and 10 this would average just a little over our 11th uh favorite of the season lower and, tier. And I, I i love the character of telly but it's just hard to carry a whole episode with her character she's she's more complimentary than she is sort of the star yeah but i get i get the I get feeling like you gotta give each character kind of something. Yeah, yeah. The season like environmental party with ZZ. I, yeah. I, I mean, we'll get to it, but ZZ, like, I love ZZ this season. Yeah, but she's always good in the supplemental role. Like, she's way good, but that supplemental role, environmental party, they kind of botched it. Yeah. But she really adds a lot to the show. Yeah, I agree for sure. Maybe, maybe our unsung hero this season. Yeah, were you feeling ZZ, Andrew? Uh, yeah, I like her. Um, you can say no, it's okay. I mean, she's just got, there's just one glaring thing that I'll bring up, uh, you know, as I get to it, that one episode where I was just like, what, this feels pointless, oh, her storyline. It but, better not be Budnick and Dino. Well, you'll find out. Well, I got a lot to say there. All right. All right. Um, what's next, Andrew? Uh... What is next is Dina and the rock star. I have an announcement. If you give me another chance, I can get someone 
very amazing to come play at the social. The Irish Spring Soap Guy? <laughs> Other page. Oh. Jamie Mallet Jr.? Are you kidding? This kid's a superstar. He's number one on the rock charts. He's got three platinum records. Why would he ever come here? Well, my dad's company sponsored his last tour. And he's a personal friend of the family. Time to vote. All in favor of having Dina in charge again, say aye. Aye. I'm done. <laughs> All right. This episode here, Dina promises to bring pops, pop superstar Jamie Mallet Jr. to Camp Anawana for a performance. The only problem is she doesn't actually know him. Oh, sure. Dina. Yeah. <laughs> um, well... This is another one that's not my one of my favorite episodes. Oh, no. uh, it just like the one thing that I like about it a lot is that it gets everybody in the camp involved. It feels like oh, it's yeah. a camp. Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that, uh, I just it feels like really out of place to me for a uh, your Shore. It's like this weird famous kid he's not like a real famous person it's just like made up for the show but at the time didn't he feel real to you i questioned I, whether he was real i had to look it up now i was like was he popular <laughs> in the 90s <laughs> it's a great name J jamie mallet jr yeah, yeah and that, yeah. that i i guess that, yeah, I, I think i looked it up that kid's been in other things mm, but mm. he he has a familiar face i don't think i watched anything he's ever on but i'm like yeah he looks like a true guest star but yeah yeah. Not a real uh, I just don't love his presence here. Like, I mean, and it would be maybe a little more tolerable if it wasn't like the camera starts to focus on him, it feels like after a while. Mm -hmm. And that whole segment just feels like I don't care about this. Like, I want the kids that I know. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It, it just, I, the, maybe my favorite joke is that first Donkey Lips joke um, irish spring guy yeah I, I i think the episode comes in hot with ugg and his one-man band yeah. like i just <laughs> dress like dick van dyke from mary poppins like and, and that that's why i should be your music for your for the social this year or whatever like like that first 30 seconds is great and then i think it just kind of plummets there i'd agree like jamie mallet jr it's nice they're bringing the guest star, but they really truly try to feature him. It's not like a Scotty Rex making a couple appearances. Like the episode is centered around him. Yeah. And I that's what seems strange. Like we, we missed the other campers. Yeah. It's just, it like seems super, I, I think even as a kid, like I was just confused by this kid. I'm like, wow, this kid must be a famous kid just because they're like paying so much attention to him. But mm -hmm. this is it my turn? <laughs> yeah I, 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 think, I think you're hankering to say something there joey <laughs> this is a good episode of salute your shorts oh. uh, <laughs> I, oh. lo I love the united concept of the talent show i i think uh that so that's a good starting point i remember this episode being on a lot so i yeah. think maybe some of my favoritism for it comes from the fact that i just watched it more than almost any other episode from the season um ending with a food fight is perfect salute your shorts just oh, yeah. a cherry on top. So, so um, I told my I told my son, who's he's eight, watching this, and told him where I ranked it. He's like, after he saw the food fight, he was like, top five, dad, top five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's right. Uh, you know, I won't say too much, but it's definitely a top fiver. Um, oh. Jamie Mallet is this kid's perfect for the role. <laughs> At, we all we all didn't know whether this guy was famous, so that's that works. Um, them being like so excited about this kind of outside anytime they're excited about something outside the camp, I kind of buy in right away. Um, and it all feels pretty organic. Oh my gosh. Jimmy Mallet playing basketball with Pinsky in the gym is just <laughs> dunking those nerf balls, man. <laughs> Dun I mean... Dunking on a four foot hoop. It's perfect. Um... That's, that's maybe the part of the episode where it really starts to feel like this thing is dragging. <laughs> Uh, we got a great line here. Where's Jamie? I want to give him this demo tape. I have five songs with tongue and tongue in the title. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say when when Ugg is out on his run, one his get up is is just yeah. great. But then his 
than his line where uh <laughs> what Jamie asks him, do you know the way to uh what are the woods? I can't remember. Yeah. But oh what are the do you know the way to Roosevelt do you know the way to Roosevelt Woods? No, but if you hum a few bars, I can try and sing it. And he just cracks himself up. Like, what a dad joke. It was just the yeah, best. Yeah. Hi, hi there, Jamie. My Kevin is my namey. See that rhymes. <laughs> There's some good moments. Yeah. Oh, there's great moments. Dina and the rock star is maybe the hidden gem of this entire series. Oh. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to antagonize. Uh, okay. uh, You're this, doing a great job. <laughs> this episode has an 8.2 on IMDb. I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath here, Andrew. <laughs> Uh, oh, for me, it's number 12. Oh, my second, God. second last of the season. <laughs> uh, Again, it just feels like one of those episodes that doesn't fit um, with this weird kid. Like, he's not really anybody. It's slow. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like they don't really take advantage of any of the main characters. Like, they show up. I'll give them credit for that. But, uh, you know, it's so much focused on this kid that, like, I don't care about the feels like a somewhat unnecessary episode i mean i wouldn't throw it out but, you know I don't jo know. joey typically when you have your dramatic reactions when andrew says something yeah. i typically side with you uh -oh. but not here man 12 <laughs> this episode came in at 12 3.25 yeah. yeah. like it just like i wanted to see more of the campers like i, I think pitsky was fine he was probably my favorite camper in the episode like all he did he just wants to play guys and you're all focused on the superstar um but as a whole like they go off camp to jamie oh the the gathering of the clothes scene to make the message jamie that just graded on and on and on and on yeah. like that to me at the beginning is really where it lost me and you know also how many guitars were in the final scene and it's really all synthesized <laughs> there's no guitars there joey you didn't hear any guitars playing that's but, classic uh, 90s kid show stuff <laughs> but but yeah definitely in the bottom for me i i don't see myself revisiting this one it had parts i give you that there was some like every episode there's one or two parts that yeah. just got me but towards the bottom for me hmm. okay. you know we didn't mention that before but like that final credits band playing thing. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> just adding to the confusion of like who is this kid and then they don't really play so it's just like no. what, is, what is going on <laughs> well i mean i'm sure the i'm sure their production budget did not afford them to like create a live song you know what i mean okay i'm just saying i, I mean, mean i don't think it worked <laughs> oh it, it was worked. fine <laughs> this you, whole you had you had two musicians on your cast, Pinsky and Budnick. They're real musicians. You could have yeah, done something. Yeah. This whole episode works, folks. Uh, it's fun. <laughs> it's high energy. I, I am, I'll, I'll admit, I am super nostalgic for this episode. Uh, I love Seems thinking crazy. about I, I, I love this one. Uh, so this is my number four. Wow. That's really crazy. <laughs> I, I knew you'd love it, Joey. I was like, I wanted to, I actually tried to force myself to bump it up because I knew you would like it, but I just couldn't do it. John, I appreciate your support <laughs> in this time of need. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Andrew, do you remember this one being on a lot? Um, I remember seeing it multiple times. Never like, it just never connecting with me on any particular level. No scene that like stuck with me. All these mm. years later. I mean, maybe that Pinsky scene, but not because it's so good. Just. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, what about, well, what about when should they play the tape recorder with the Wildcats that scares Jamie out of the tent? My, my eight-year-old wow. son loved that part. <laughs> See? <laughs> I, I forgot. Approximately, probably a, scene even exist. I was probably younger. I was younger than eight. So this probably just blew my socks off. Yeah. I'm like, God, this Jamie Mallet. I gotta go see if I can find his <laughs> album. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey. Go to the record store. Oh, man. All right. Uh, what do we have next here, Andrew? Uh, the next, a good bump up. Uh, the <laughs> Curse Skull or Clan of the Cave Girls. Where did that skull come from? A cow or a giant hamster? I found it at the Sacred Caves. It's pretty cool, huh? 
I knew it. That's the cursed skull. It brings bad luck to anybody who comes in contact with it. Oh, come on. There's no such thing as bad luck. Is there, Sponge? Superstitions are illogical. Legends say that the Indians use this skull in the initiation ceremony of their secret society of blood and fire. If you fail the test, they kill you. Wow. That's pretty strict. <laughs> You've got to take it back to the caves right away. That's a great idea. Taking it back? No, a secret society. It'll start our own. Yeah. The Order of the Skull. Insanely great. We'll have midnight rituals and secret code supreme yeah. at guy stuff. Yeah, but it's my idea, so I get to be the Skull Master. Hey, I'll start thinking about the initiation rituals. Hey, Zizi, you can't see any of this. Yeah. Don't worry. If you're keeping that thing, I don't want to be anywhere near you. A secret society! Okay. <laughs> Budnick has found the legendary cursed skull, while the boys form a secret society. Camp falls victim to a wave of bad luck. <laughs> Nailed it. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Got in your head. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Um, what do we make here of the cursed skull or clan of the cave girls? Was that the uh, Zeke noise? Yeah. You know what? I didn't actually realize it was in this episode, so it must be used twice. So this oh, one, okay. and there's still another one. Okay. Um, yeah, this was uh, the only like horror sort of tinged episode of the season, which may be partially why I like it so much. But I, I do have like a more of a nostalgia for this episode, maybe than any of the other ones from this season. Mm. Um, but it's part like in my head, it's part of what I think of as the Salute Your Shorts like horror trilogy between Zeke the Plumber. Sarah Madre in this one. They all feel like a little bit creepier. I mean, I love that feel. Um, I, and you guys, uh, long time listeners know I love any episode that's like big on it being really hot out or like a super summer day, you know. Um, so it's got that heat factor to it, which has Ugg like outside. I love uh, trying to cool off. Um, it's got the leaving the camp at night. Uh, and um i don't know man there's something about like the boys versus girls the way they do it in this episode uh just works for me like the parallel storylines going on um mm. and the the final like reveal at the end of this episode is um i think just really nails it what? so we're going to oh uh so where where's the sneaking out at night? Which part do you interpret as sneaking out at night? Oh, at night? Uh, well, I interpret the girls like being out of the bunks at night. Uh, well, see, uh, see, that's the thing. Like they leave in the middle of day and they set the skull down and then all of a sudden they turn around and it's pitch black at night yeah. and it starts yeah. raining. But it's like it went from like three o'clock in the afternoon to <laughs> nine o'clock at night, like in a second. Yeah, uh, it was. I mean, I, I I liked it, but kind of like with again going back to the girls they're awesome supplemental characters but driving the main story here like it just i wanted it to be good because I, j just like joey in the last episode andrew i know you love this episode like <laughs> you you've expressed your love for this episode several times and it's like i wanted to like it but i like the secret society storyline a lot better and we only get to see a few parts of that um, like I want to see how they got covered in, in mud and gargled chocolate pudding. Like that would have been fun to see, but, uh, yeah, as a whole, like, I, I think, I, I think when I watched as a kid and even now I want to watch salute your shorts to laugh. And there wasn't a ton of laughing moments in this one. I thought. I, I, I agree. I think, um, I, I love the vibe of this episode. It has, it has great promise. The skull is kind of this eerie thing, this warning of not to interact with the skull. Um, but honestly, I feel like even though that is what should have been the focus, the girl storyline, the clan of the cave girls story storyline works a little better. Like they the the argument between the girls is more interesting somehow than this cursed skull. And to me, that seems like a screw up a little bit like there's no reason I should be more invested in the girls arguing than this skull that is potentially cursed. So mm -hmm. I, I like the, I like watching this episode. You know what I mean? Like I like kind of just sitting with it, but it's, I think it 
I think it misses a little bit. Okay. And 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 the girls in that cave, they start to get talking about some really racy things. I have no idea how that made it on the Nickelodeon with uh they're oh. reflecting on Parents Day and when Dina did a cannonball off the diving board, she says her top fell off was her most embarrassing moment. And Cece goes, That's Donkey List's favorite memory. <laughs> yeah. And, and then they go, I wonder what it's like after. Whoa. Like that's pretty racy stuff there in the cave. R- what were they t- they were talking about kissing right yeah yeah and then what yeah. happens after you kiss and it's like whoa it's like i wonder what happens after whoa yeah yeah i, I thought the same thing where it's like this seems like a little like non-relevant to the story <laughs> i guess i was just reading it as um like from their point like from a young girl's point of view whatever yeah. i thought it felt like natural but Maybe I'm, you know, maybe I don't know what I'm talking I was never a young girl, so I don't know. <laughs> um, Breaking news. <laughs> for, for, for some reason, the most memorable part of this episode before watching it was the opening sequence. I, them fishing off the side of the dock and talking about oh, that is fish good. and what they eat. And then Pinsky going on his Three Stooges rant a little bit. Like, I don't know. For some reason, that sticks out in my mind. I, I don't yeah. know what, how, how or why it's associated with this episode. But uh, I just remember that like really distinctly. Um, I also just want to mention the part where the boys sneak out of their bunk and go after Ugg's nose hair. Yes. Um, it's just, an, it just feel like, I just love the feel of that segment. Um, you know, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just my nostalgia, like being out in the dark or something as a kid, whatever. Hmm. Definitely a highlight of the episode. Well, this episode, nobody picked this as their favorite on Patreon. Uh, It has an 8.1 out of 10 on IMDb, which is pretty good. Out of 13, where did you rank this one, Andrew? Uh, I put it at number five. Um, It's like, it's an episode that I would love to revisit, always love to revisit. Um, You know, all the stuff I said, the horror aspect of it, it just feels like the, the final part of that part of the series um yeah i don't know like i just feel so nostalgic about this episode something about the way everybody's interacting um just really puts me in that like mode of that time in my life i guess Hmm. okay john so this definitely makes my top 10 and it comes in right at number 10 i gave it three and a half it makes a cut of an episode I'd I'd watch again, but not necessarily one I'd seek out. It's it's good to see the girls get the day, and I, I think you're you're right, Andrew. That I, it probably addresses how how girls really would bond, how they might fight, how what the things they might discuss when they're all alone and they're kind of trying to work through some emotions. So so there's probably some realness there, and maybe that's why it just didn't click with me either i wanted to see more of the secret society even though they act like it's a brand new thing but isn't that what why they said michael to go get the girl stuff in season one is because to join the secret society hmm. i think that's i, I think, think that's a whole reason like like at right. least the concept exists yeah, yeah. but uh anyway so it was it was a it was a good watch it wasn't definitely near my top so number 10 for me okay i put this at number six of the 13 hmm. um i think you kind of like right down the middle not not the worst episode of the season not the best hmm. just kind of an average episode that i think could, should have been in my top five but i don't think they worked out the story enough um i i, I you know you might as well just go for a zeke feel you know it worked yeah. so well why try try to go a little bit harder and it seems like they were really refraining uh, okay. I mean, I, I, I guess I give them credit for not just repeating what they've already done. You know, like I wouldn't want just a rehash of Zeke that would be not as good. Like, you know, I, I do understand what you're saying. I think that's maybe where we're different. Where it's like, you know what? Just go ahead and run it back for me. <laughs> like, let's, oh, <laughs> let's, let's get a creepy episode here. <laughs> um, can can I shout out a couple of my favorite lines on this? Oh one? yeah. yeah. Oh, so so there's two stand up. One, as Ugg walks in when the girls are kind of in the lobby area, keep working, girls. I'm just here to brighten your day. 
<laughs> lamp humor. <laughs> and then, uh, then has anyone seen Ugg? And Donkey Lips goes, I saw him running in his underwear looking for a four leaf clover and a bee stung him in the butt. Uh, those two just, <laughs> yeah. Um, just while, while you're mentioning them, uh, my favorite, just stupid line in this is Budnick. I am the skull master of the oh, galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and and might I say, like, this is where it really stood out. And I think it happened earlier. Telly has some of the worst insults on the show. Um, her one here, would you stop being so cheerful? It's like living with Jiffy the Magic Elf. <laughs> like, her insults are so random. Yeah. And like, yeah. when, when Butnik insults you, it pierces you to the heart. When Telly insults you, it's like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> um, I do want to point out Telly's slip and fall in the um, cafeteria. That has uh -huh. always stuck with me for some reason. It just it looks like really real and really painful, but <laughs> all right. Uh what's what's next, Aaron? Andrew? Um well, next is Budnick Loves Dina, part one. That girl's amazing. Um, All right. Uh, do you have a tissue? Yeah, but it's used. <laughs> this episode, uh, Budnick develops a crush on Dina, and with Pinsky's advice, tries to win her affection. This is a two-parter. Yeah, uh, the only oh, two-parter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I assume we're talking about the episodes separately, though, because I do think they're of yeah, different yeah. quality. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Okay. okay. Um, uh, Andrew, how'd you feel here? Yeah, I like some things about it. It's not my favorite episode, but uh, Budnick's song is so ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> it's pr it's a pretty memorable part of what's going on in this. Yeah. Sh should um, we go through those lyrics right now? I had to rewatch it four or five yeah. times, but I've got them all. Okay, yeah, yeah. Do you want to hear it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Here we go. In any language, in any voice, you are my baby, my primo choice. I hablo amor, I parle a vous. A spreckle of your freckle. Hey, I want you. <laughs> I'm cooking up some loving, a bubbling stew. Dinner is served and I need you. Dina, oh yeah, Dina. <laughs> a buffet of life, you're a sizzling fajita platter con muy bueno salsa. Hey, baby, I'm the horn and you're the magical, you're the musical unicorn. My love is like a rainbow and you're the pot of gold. I want you in my arms and you're the one that I want to hold, Dina. You're the yeah. clean socks after walking in the swamp. You're the floss in my teeth after a mouthful of popcorn. I'll ask you right here, will you be mine? My girlfriend forever. Can you give me a sign? Dina. Oh, yeah. Dina. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, oh, it's, man. it's so long. Uh, insanely long. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> it does sound like something that would that a kid might come up with. I mean, yeah. it's very bad, but also there's like, it's not, it doesn't sound like a made up thing as much <laughs> as like some things like this might. And sponge on the keytar behind him, like that's <laughs> rocking. Yeah. When he comes into the uh, cafeteria, <laughs> um, I, you know, I like some things about this episode. Uh, Donkey Lips and Sponge, I generally like them going through their uh, merit badge thing. There's just not that much of it. Um, I like the campers, like, all breaking their legs and being on crutches uh -huh. throughout the episode. That's a good addition. Um, maybe my favorite thing in this is the uh, final, like, uh, Sponge and Donkey Lips helping him uh, track her footprints and finding her in the lake. Like, mm. and even that's you know, I don't. It's it's not that big of a deal. It's like a small detail. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess I just don't. It doesn't feel super memorable. It feels like a lesser, somewhat version of um, Donkey Lips loves Dina. Yeah. To me, I think that's a good point. Mm -hmm. So, 
this episode was probably the most pleasant surprise of rewatching season two. In my memory, I didn't like this two-parter. It was like, ugh, a love story. Like, as a kid, like, I don't want to watch this. And then I rewatched it, and I loved so many things about mm. this episode. Um, one, you've got the, uh, you mentioned everyone's hurt it, injuring their knees and how they go about doing that. Though I did think it was strange that Ugg was partnered with ZZ in the three-legged race. How could she not just have another camper <laughs> with her? But, you know, Ugg and ZZ have a relationship there. It's well yeah. established. Um, so, so you have that whole thing. You have the Indian Scouts, which is fun to see. Donkey Lips and Sponge work together. Um, you have Budnick. I like Bully Budnick, but you can see this transitioning of him in this episode. He hasn't gone like full on straight Budnick, but it's kind of fun to see him like, wow, I, I really like this girl. And like, I'm the opposite of what she wants and kind of transition that that song goes on so long and it's so uncomfortable but i think it hits like what the kids are feeling while watching him sing it like i felt uncomfortable for <laughs> yeah yeah as he was singing that song um and then let's let's just take a moment and reflect on the greatness of zz here like zz just pulls your heartstrings like she thinks bud nick likes her and then finds out he doesn't and you get that whole sequence where bud nick walks into the room i mean Joey, this is straight out of 15 with that synth pop music, <laughs> that dramatic yes. talking. You know, could yeah. you ever like a girl like me? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I loved it. Like, it, it was so different than anything else, but it also had the points that made me laugh. Like, again, I thought this would be at my bottom, but I actually ended up really enjoying this episode. Hmm. Yeah, I liked it. You know what? I watched this one when I started rewatching the season early and it was ranked really high. Uh, but as I watched, it kind of slipped and that is to say that it's not bad. I, I, and I think I agree. I think I ended up liking it more than I thought I would, but it's still a little bit lower. Um, I think of, I think in also what I did is I kind of compared which of the two parts I liked more. So that hurt it a little bit. Cause you know, spoiler, mm -hmm. I liked the second one a little bit more, but, um, yeah, it's not bad. And and you're right. There are some uncharacteristically not there. There are some uncharacteristic moments in this episode. That ZZ scene is absolutely a 15 scene that feels really weird for a Salute Your Shorts episode where she's just kind of mourning Budnick not liking her. Mm -hmm. uh, and that Budnick rapping scene is so freaking crazy. Uh, it's 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 I just no idea what's happening and you're right they do nail that awkwardness I love Pinsky just laughing at him as he's doing it um but uh yeah not not my all-time favorite um, um I just want to add like I like that I, I don't dislike the ZZ um crushing on Budnick storyline I just don't feel like it works for me in this oh i totally disagree like you have yeah. like the kind of nerdy girl at camp and the bad boy and it's like yeah. oh like it just, like i think all zz wants is just some attention and finally yeah. she thinks like she's getting yeah oh definitely uh it just feels like a little much i mean like with everything else going on in the episode it's like this is happening too i don't know hmm. okay uh well this episode has a 7.9 on imdb it got one vote for favorite wow um what did you where did you guys place this um i put it at number 11 mm. um, oh. you know just aside budnick's whatever poem is probably the most memorable part of the episode but um i just didn't think anything else nailed it for me in this one it felt like sort of a retread and I don't know. Felt like a little much. Okay. Well, I can I can clearly tell I am not going to be in alignment with you guys, but I just <laughs> want you both to know that if you find who you're looking for and they break your heart again, I'll be here to pick up the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I gave this episode four and a half Krev stars. It ended up number four on number my four. list. Okay. Uh, higher higher than I thought. 
Um, sounds like we'll disagree on part two a little bit, but I, I felt like to this point, I've been a little harsh on the episodes, but I think we're going to start getting into the murderer's row of this season. And it starts with this one. Like there's just, you know, the, the competitiveness of Pinsky and Telly comes in here. You get a fast motion trash pickup scene. You get the emotion of ZZ. You get uh, uh, Budnick and, and, and an atypical role. Um, my favorite line from Ugg. With two semesters of sports medicine under my belt, I can tell you guys are doing an excellent job as they talk about re- <laughs> healing yeah. their knees. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, for some reason, I just ended up loving this episode. And I do like the iconic Budnick getting in the boat and then going out into the middle of the lake. That that scene stood out in my mind uh, as a kid, too. Yeah. So um, higher than I think I would have ranked it than like eight year old me, but ended up number four. I, I do love the image of when she when a Budnick gets on the boat of Dina rowing and Budnick yeah. just just leisurely <laughs> laying in the canoe. Um, yeah, uh, I, I this was my number nine of the season, um, so I think still plenty rewatchable, but um, I do like the next one a little bit more, and I think. Uh, I don't know. I don't mind this episode. As you guys said, that's why I realized when you guys said the top nine here are all ones you'd rewatch. This is, you know, my number nine, but I think I would not have a problem rewatching it. And I think I actually prefer this over Donkey Lips and Dina. It's just less, Mm -hmm. it's just less brutal. Uh, Sure. um, I don't love brutal, especially with Donkey Lips. I just, I don't like it. It's a little mean sometimes. I, I disagree with that. I, I mean, they're brutal for sure. I, I have fondness for that episode from season one, but, but okay. this is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, well, I forgot to say, Curse Skull. It was a five, ten, and six, so that would average to be our seventh favorite of the season. Uh, this is eleven, four, nine. I mean, it would be our eighth favorite of the season. Cum- cumulative. Uh, Andrew, next part. Uh, part two, Bud Nick loves Dina. Or Bud Nick. Are you all right, honey? I'm fine. I was just having a little fun. Were you guys all born and born? <laughs> Don't you realize that food fighting is very bad? Very, very bad. <laughs> this camp has rules. If we do not abide by those rules, we could have complete anarchy. I looked that up in the dictionary. <laughs> Bobby Butnick stopped a food fight? <laughs> oh, I must be still hallucinating. I need way more ice. <laughs> I love that, yeah. Yeah. Um, this, um, this is part two. Yeah. Same same, same premise. Uh, mm-hmm. but, but Budnick has now changed his ways to a classy guy for, for Dina. But she and the rest of camp soon find themselves wanting the old Budnick back. Yeah. Um... I also did like this one a little bit more than the last one. Mm. Um, I just like seeing, I think Budnick's transformation is my favorite part about this whole two-parter. It's just so goofy. I mean, combined with like her, uh, Dina's imagination of him growing old. Um, But uh, yeah, I don't know. And I do like the final haircutting threatening scene and her destroying his pick but um you know i there's i guess there's no like super memorable parts for me besides that um i sort of like it but it it, again maybe maybe these episodes could have been combined to me um so uh it's you know i'm back and forth on it i i I would watch all of these again but this is not um again not one of my real favorites i i love like the first four minutes of the episode so first the recap by donkey lips on the flag like what a way if this is coming out week by week like to recap what happened last week yeah and yeah. Donkey Lips' physical humor as he's being attacked by the bee is just like it is <laughs> ugly level. Like it is so good. And then when it transitions to uh uh Dina and Budnick on their first date, yeah. and you have Pinsky on the mirror and Donkey Lips on the flight, like everyone's yeah. involved. And, and let's just call out the highlight of the episode. 
when they pull back to that crowd cheering after they announce each thing, there are two kids in the front row, one in a pink and one in a red shirt. And they are just like having a blast. <laughs> They're like dancing in sync and doing these like coordinated dances. Like if you, if you, if you don't recall it, like watch it, like I can't get that image out of my mind. Like, <laughs> they are just like, Hey, this is the greatest role of my life. And I'm going to give it everything I have. And they are just going to town on it. But I, I guess what bothered me is like, the lack of cohesion between the two, like suddenly ZZ just totally forgets she was in love with Budnick and she's excited okay. for Dina to go on a date and everyone's knees except Pinsky and Telly are healed. Like it just, and I, I love serious Budnick, but I wish I could have had like 50% of the episode serious Budnick and then Budnick back to his old ways again. Like it was just a little too much for me. Hmm. Um, not that it was bad. And I think as a two parter, it, it, it does its job. But that's ultimately what probably separated these two. I, I, it sounds like I'm the opposite of you guys. I like the first one better as mm-hmm. opposed to the second one. Yeah. I, I I love the way this starts with the spying on Budnick and Dina. Just the whole operation is really funny. Um, and I think, you know, it's worth a try here with the dynamic of Budnick being classy. I think it's... um. I think it was worth, I I get why the writers really wanted to try this. And so I Mm -hmm. think it led to a slightly funnier episode. Um, I mean, just that clip we played alone was, you know, just so great, (laughs) but just Budnick really taken control. Um, Yeah. I, I I like I like the dynamic of this episode. I love that um, Dina has to figure out a way to break up with Budnick in a way that will work. And I like what she does with, you know, his guitar pick, his sign of love to her. The Steve um, Vai guitar pick. <laughs> yes, the Steve <laughs> Vai guitar pick. And then ultimately, you know, the threat of him having to cut his hair is yeah. kind of an ingenious way of you know, being like, all right, what would Budnick draw the line at? Yeah. And, <laughs> um, so, yeah. Any other thoughts before we rate it? I, I guess just a little deep dive here. So the Steve Vai connection. So I guess at this time, Budnick was making a, uh, an album with his band bad for good. Oh, yeah. And it was oh, produced yeah. by Steve Vai. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, and in that album, uh, both Blake Sennett and Michael Bauer sang backup vocals. Whoa. And yeah. And there's a song called devil in the angel that specifically references this talking about how like a poor white boy and a rich white or a rich girl or something like that. So there's an actual song that reps it. I listened to the song, not my jam, but <laughs> you can tell, you can hear Blake Sinnott clearly. I, I guess it's Donkey Lips also singing in the background. Um, mm. But I also came to find out that uh, Budnick actually sang backup vocals and takeoffs and landings was Rilo Kylie's first real album after their initial friend EP. But you yeah. see the kind of music worlds collide here. But I think that's why they... Uh, that's why they use Steve Vai because he was actually producing an album for Budnick's mm, band. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. That is cool. <laughs> um, nice. All right. Well, this, this episode has a 7.9, same as the first part. Mm-hmm. Uh, where, where did you place it out of 13? Um, I put it at number 10. So one step higher than the first part. Okay. Um, you know, mostly just, mostly I'd love that uh, good Budnick just seeing him and hearing him talk and <laughs> yeah um yeah that's probably like the clincher for me to put it over the edge gotcha what about you john uh so i ended up giving this one uh four crab stars it ended up number seven for me okay. so a few episodes down from the first one but uh had some nice parts again that first four or five minutes killed me um one of my favorite lines candies flowers is love in the air no, Ugg's burning trash again. Uh, <laughs> that was a great line, Budnick to Dina. But uh, yep, number number seven for me. Okay, yeah, uh, number number seven for me as well. Um, you know, I, I I think just the the part I prefer a little bit more. Uh, I think the classy Budnick is the thing I'll remember from uh, all of it. May, I don't know, maybe the Budnick rap. It's hard to say, but. Um, <laughs> They're, they're pretty close either way. Uh, so with a 10 and a 7 and a 7, actually this average is exactly the same as the last part, which is really interesting. Mm. Uh, 8. So pretty pretty much a pair and probably could have just been considered one episode. Um, yeah. 
Uh, Andrew? Um, oh, boy. Oh Next boy. episode, uh, p- possibly a lot of people's favorites, Sponge's Night Out or Sponge Goes to Sponge, you're going to love Attack of the Cheese Monster. Siskel and Ebert called it a zesty summer tonic. How's the uh, Swedish coming here? Well, I can count to ten, and I can say, the aunt of my father is happy in the lips. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay, we still got to work on your look a little bit. Stand up, stand up, stand up. I got it. She'll think you have muscles. She'll think I'm the Pillsbury Doughboy. I'm no good at dating. Hey, hey, don't knock it till you've tried it. I have tried it. My dad's boss has a daughter, Bitsy Lombardo. They made me take her to the junior prom. Ugh, what happened? She stood in the corner and laughed at me. Why? Well, my parents made me wear a hand-me-down seersucker jacket, (laughs) and some big guy put fudge cake down the back of my pants. Well, it is time to put your behind behind you. We'll go tonight, you won't have to wear the jacket, but you will have to wear these. These are red, hot in Sweden. Clogs? Yeah, yeah, you know of them. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pins- Get that cake out of your pants. <laughs> Pinsky's discovery of Sponge's uh, modem leads to a double date at the movie theater with the rest of the gang following along to spy on them. Uh, this is known as Sponge's Night Out or Sponge Goes to the Movies. I, forget, I know we probably talked about this on the episode with Brett Wilson, but do you prefer one title over the other, Andrew? Hmm. Boy, I, I think I actually like Sponge's Night Out better, but having the word movies in there yeah. Um, yeah. makes it. I don't know. Yeah, I think you want that word that movie works. in there. Yeah. yeah, it's not great, but it's probably I slightly lean that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thoughts? Um, I mean, a very good episode, a classic episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the whole calling outside of camp is a great like segment um and of course i love going to the the going to the movies like thing um uh and uh, another like sneaking out of camp at night um i think uh my only real criticism of this one is that i think like the first third of it moves just sort of slow i mean i this is one of those episodes that has stuck in my mind over all these years, but as I rewatch it, I'm like those first handful of minutes, I'm like almost can't even remember. I'm like, where's this going? How does mm-hmm. so that's my feeling. Uh, so so I, I know I know you both got to do an episode review with Brett on this, and that's probably the one episode where I was probably the saddest that I wasn't on to talk about it. Um, so I'm just going to go off on this one for a second. Like, I love this episode. Probably the most memorable. I, I mean, it's hard to say with Zeke just because Zeke is so iconic. But as far as the hits of this episode and everything it covers, like, I love it. From, you know, from the very beginning to using the, you have the payphone in there. Um, for some reason, Dina quoting and Garfield fell off the sofa and went, ah, like, I don't know why it's so funny, but it is hilarious. You have the, the choosing of the clubs, you know, classic camp trope. You have the illegal use of the phone. Um, you mm-hmm. have uh, punishment happening to the kids mm-hmm. with, with sponge having to do the push ups, And then you have the great, you also have the great scene of Ugg trying to get in his car for the date. And Dr. Khan just, <laughs> You can him and tell him to come to his office. Um, and then it just all blows up in that final scene. I mean, that movie theater scene, I think, is the best scene in Salute Your Shorts. Mm. I mean, Ugg, Ugg is just off the chain on this episode. <laughs> um, the, his flirting with, <laughs> with the concession stand lady. And my brother and I all the time will quote... Uh, <laughs> And a large diet, please. And uh, you to go. (laughs) I mean, it's it's so cringy. It makes you feel uncomfortable, but hilarious. And when he walks out of the theater with that girl in a headlock and she starts crying, I just I can't get enough of it. Like this is this is so good. The hits are all there. Um, Everyone's involved. And I think they use Sponge and Penske 
in the right way, kind of having the coolest mm. kid and the nerdiest kid at camp together all to kind of get out the scheme and Sponge is the one that ends up ahead at the end. I ah, just love this episode. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, I'll say 11 people voted for it on Patreon as their favorite um, with 58 percent of the vote. Uh, it is um, man, I you know, I often confuse this episode for being a season one episode. And to me, mm-hmm, that's like yeah. the highest compliment you could give us Lady yeah. Shorts in the second season. Um, it feels really essential to the overall legacy of Salute Your Shorts. It gets back to the kids trying to one-up Ugg, which, as I mentioned, I think is important to the fabric of the show. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a top five, for sure, a top five Salute Your Shorts for me. Uh, and I, in my opinion, before I know we're getting to our ratings, I, I think it's easily the best of this season. Um, mm. Yeah, love it. <laughs> the antics are wild in this one uh it has a 9.2 on imdb so that is the highest score on imdb where'd you guys rank it uh well it doesn't surprise me that uh, most people think this is the best um and i pro i might have like before we started revisiting all this stuff i might have ranked it as my top mm. um but now as i rewatched all these uh it I put it at number six. Wow. Um, it's that just, it's, it's mainly that first <laughs> third. It's just like, it just feels kind of dragged out and unnecessary. Oh. And, the, and the rest of the episode is fantastic. And um, some of the most memorable stuff in the series. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Oh, don't Andrew, know. you got to reconsider this. <laughs> This seems, yeah, this seems pretty extreme. I mean, I agree. You know, back, you know, when, when you guys uh, did more of your verses and Joey, I mean, you're, you're you're strong at that. But I always found myself siding with Andrew saying, you can do this, Andrew. Like, I agree with you, but I disagree with you so much here, Andrew. I like to me, this is I know I'm with some Zeke fans, but this is like, this is my favorite episode of Sleep Your Shorts. It's mm. number one for the season. I mean, I hit on a lot of the points, but I didn't even go into, you know, Ugg trying to get into the closet over and over again with all his keys and stuff falling out on him. His date with Mona, like the yeah. reference of Mona. Yeah. But then the, uh, <laughs> the my favorite line out of that. Uh, and then it's a moonlight cruise with Jimmy Sturgeon's polka pirates. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds expensive. Yeah. Good thing Mona's paying. <laughs> like it's, I mean, just, just classic Ugg. Like, I think this is the best episode at using everyone I, I think the girls get a little overshadowed they don't have a strong piece they're there helping Ugg get ready for his date but in general I think I think everyone is used perfectly you have Budnick and Donkey Lips kind of back together kind of like season one like causing mischief going to film the date um, you do have some cringy scenes in the, in the movie theater with the whole bathroom uh, with Dina and Donkey Lips, which is kind of strange, but as a whole, like I just just love this episode. It's so memorable. It's probably my most personal quoted one in my life. Um, I just hope there's not anarchy from your Patreon fans by putting it so low. Andrew. That's just my <laughs> bring the anarchy, Patreon fans. Let Andrew know. <laughs> yeah, this is the best episode of the season. I, I you. Know, I actually kind of understand what you're saying with the slow start, but I think penalizing it to number six for the start is really intense. I mean, this this episode is so funny. I mean, it gets funnier as it goes. Um, so I, I I don't know. I love it. Uh, I think I think it rightfully holds its place in the uh, Salute Your Shorts pantheon. And yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, I wasn't, you know, way, I was partially trying to, like, discount nostalgia as much as I could, um, and I just, I guess I just found, like, after I watched this, like, there's so much nostalgia involved in it, I'm just not sure it lives up to my feelings about it, maybe. Okay, okay. Well, Sid commented easily, Sponge goes to the movie, so (laughs) we'll let Sid have the final word, okay? Mm. (laughs) Hmm. Sid, you are a genius. <laughs> Andrew, what's up next? Um, 
The next episode is this Pinsky Sponge Gazette. New species of tick discovered. Camp Onawana, superior soil. Suki Gump likes graham crackers. Very tasty, claims camper. Dull stories. Dull? Who thinks soil is dull? Gee, let me think. Everyone? Listen, if we're gonna get readers, we gotta jazz this up. We? Us. I like challenges. Listen, let me be editor-in-chief for a while, and we'll run stories that kids want to read. We'll split everything 50-50. Deal, but it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, but we might make some money. Besides, I think it would be fun to run a newspaper. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... When Pinsky joins Sponge's uh, failing camp newspaper, the two initially find great success. But when stories begin drying up, Pinsky resorts to creating his own news. Yeah. Yep. Uh, also known as Citizen Pinsky. Yeah, which is, of course. Uh, which I love. <laughs> There's nothing more kids love than 1940s movie references. <laughs> oh, man. But the, the feeling that you can smugly lean over to your loved one and say... Hey, they're referencing Citizen Kane here. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I was doing to my eight-year-old. Like, hey, you know what this is about? <laughs> Nothing better than that smug feeling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would you um, would you like this, Andrew? Cit- Citizen Pinsky? Yes. Yes. This is an episode that I think, like, in my mind was lower than it actually should be. Like, I think it's a really good episode. Um I think uh, I think it's maybe the second strongest Pinsky episode after the, after his arrival um, just really gets to show him off as like a different type of villain from Budnick, um, like a more underhanded and not so much like more like neutral rather than evil kind of. Um, uh, I love how, how everyone gets involved with this Budnick's horoscopes, uh, suggesting the kids leave him money. Um, the Ugg fly, like trying to f- swat the fly as the mm-hmm. camera scene. Love that. Um, uh, Ugg doing the crossword throughout the episode. I love and how it finally wraps up in the end. It's just like, I, I love Ugg's moment of saying that. I don't understand it, but it fits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, uh, <laughs> One of my favorite moments in probably the whole series is Donkey Lips' shadow showing up yes, uh, outside the window. <laughs> so amazing. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I feel like this is one that I often overlook somewhat, but that's like a really strong episode. I think like nostalgia wise, I don't really remember this episode. All that I remember Deep Trout in the window um remember dina and her french boyfriend but as a whole it's like i I didn't didn't recall much of it and for some reason i came i decided to watch this just a couple years ago and maybe it's because of the citizen kane references uh (laughs) but uh i just found myself really appreciating it for that that can tower at the beginning of the episode like that scene really sticks out in my head too um all the kids playing around at Ugg just desperately not want it fall. And of course, Ugg knocks it over. Um, yeah. The, the, the granite woman stuff, it was good at supplementing the main mm-hmm. story. It, like as a whole, like it always bugged me that Telly would ride a bike around in a tight circle to try and reach <laughs> five miles or whatever. I'm like, can't you just ride around at least the whole basketball <laughs> court? Um, but uh, th- there's that. Uh, you mentioned like Ugg, Ugg kills it in several places. What, like it's just a passing line. But when Sponge like Sponge goes, "Oh, you want a newspaper? It's free." He goes, "Yeah, headaches are free, but I don't want one of those." <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it's just it's it's really good and uh, uh, definitely one of the tops of this season. Um, I do think the headline montage goes on a little long. Mm, yep. I didn't time it, but it. I mean, I would say it's a solid two minutes of just. Oh, yeah. Ugg in the press and headlines and like very t- talk about references. Kids won't get Dewey defeats Truman <laughs> yeah. and like some really strange ones. But uh, I I enjoyed this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just want to throw in that Ugg uh, working the printer press. I love that whole thing. Yeah, him spilling yeah. the ink on himself. Yeah. 
Well, I'm afraid you guys have lost your minds. Uh, oh boy. This is a bad one. This is, Whoa! This no. is not. Completely this is not. not. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a good uh, episode of Slow Your Shorts. Um, this is like, you know, Andrew, what you were talking about with the slow start. I mean, this episode, I feel the first half of it every minute. And I've tried to watch this episode a couple times. And I swear to God, every time my eyes glaze <laughs> over, uh, it's just for some reason, this episode does not excite me. Um, I feel like there's no rhythm to it. Like it's slow start kind of, a, you know, the, you know, Salute Shorts is often guilty of a too long montage. I do love that they do montages, but the editing is a little loose. Um, and uh, I don't like seeing Ronnie Pinsky sink to this level um <laughs> <laughs> he got corrupted like he, he, so the power corrupted. went to his head yeah absolutely i mean he yeah he's kane here but he I, that's part of what i like about pinsky though is he is like a good guy and a bad guy for sure the, yeah he contains sure. multitudes no doubt uh i don't know i don't know what it is about this episode it like releases a chemical in my brain that says go to sleep um oh. uh, yeah uh, I think maybe flip this with your Dina the rock star. That's yes. probably more yeah. accurate. How dare you? How <laughs> dare you? Jamie Mallet Jr. Put some respect on his name. Um, this episode has an 8.6 on IMDb. Nobody from Patreon voted it as their favorite. Where did you rank Citizen Pinsky? Uh, I put it at number four. Um, yeah, again, I, I just really... A full episode as far as all the characters getting used um, a lot of funny moments so, to me it's like a a very fast paced episode um but yeah i don't know i just had a really good time with it rewatching it um and of course and i and just to mention it again because it can't be too much uh donkey lips behind the windows like <laughs> Just so amazing. <laughs> that alone makes it top five. I think. <laughs> oh boy, uh, where'd you put it? Oh boy, uh, so I gave this four point seven five crab stars, and it ended up number two on my wow. list. It was I, I didn't I didn't think it would end up being this high. I originally had it a little bit lower because uh, some nostalgia would have raised some others, but I just I. I ended up loving it. It's good. We can all we can agree to disagree on some things, guys. But yeah, this is uh, this ended up top two for me. Number two. Nice. Well, this ended up bottom two for me. Uh, oh, this honestly, is, this is number twelve, folks. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, I, I'd recommend it if you're just looking for a good cozy nap. Uh, just oh, throw boy. it on. Oh, <laughs> Man, we always got a couple outliers, uh, but this one feels especially it, it hurts did you remember this one from being younger uh i didn't remember any specific parts before i watched it but like of course when i saw donkey lips i was like oh my yeah. god yeah this is what that was you know okay I, I think it hits better as an adult than it does as a kid yeah, yeah. Out of the ones i watched yeah okay folks <laughs> maybe, maybe if andrew gets anarchy on uh sponges night out maybe you guys can let me have it on a Pitsky Sponge Gazette. <laughs> uh, Andrew, what's our next episode? Mm. Uh, the next one is Capture the Flag. What are you trying to do? Start an earthquake? I'm improving my agility for the obstacle course. Donkey Lips helped me get on the wrestling team, so I'm helping him get on the Capture the Flag team. He's going to make me an attacker. Oh, dream on. Not even with Pinsky's help is Ugg ever going to make you an attacker. And why not? Well, you look in the mirror, you get wasted in a second. Donkey Lips, it's mind over matter. If you think like an attacker, you will be an attacker. Yeah. Uh, capture the flag. The gang arms themselves with water balloons for a capture the flag tournament. Donkey Lips has his heart set on being the attacker, but first he must pass the obstacle course. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, another super memorable episode. Yeah, uh, I think it. You know, I'm trying to like even decide why, and I'm. I, I almost feel like just the idea of capture the flag is mm. with like water balloons. Like that, that's like yeah, every yeah. kid's ideal. Yeah. Um. Uh. 
I will say I don't absolutely love the first half of this episode. Uh, I think it just moves a little bit slow, but I love um, the second half. I think like the second half is uh, just feels really fun being out there on the, um, I don't know, course with all the campers. Um, I think they just really nailed that part, but I, I almost wish it was like more of the episode. Um, but I, I don't know, a really fun one. I'm just like, you know, now somewhat conflicted. Hmm. I, I, I agree. I think season, when I think of, I mean, I, I've already expressed my love for Sponge Goes the Movies, but I think actually what I think of season two, this is probably the first one that pops into my head. Like, it, it seems like one of those episodes that wasn't on a lot, but when it came on, I was just like so excited because you see this, like, you know, I played capture the flag as a kid, never with water balloons, but I've thrown water balloons and that's a blast. So putting the two together is just yeah. like, like I would love to do Like if I want to go, if I go to a summer camp, this would be something yeah. I would want to do. For sure. And so I, I think, I think also featuring donkey lips, he, he is my favorite character on salute your shorts. Mm. I have a fondness for him. And I have, uh, I actually watched these episodes on a signed DVD by Michael Bauer yes. himself. Yes. Um, the, though the quality of them is the same quality you got watching daily motion. <laughs> um, I think, I think they're just ripped from there, but, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's just so memorable. Like they, we start to get into this sort of dream sequence flash scene. Like when he goes into the war games of Pinsky in the floor, it, it doesn't seem to really fit kind of the salute your short style. But, uh, I think as a whole, you, you have that, you have Ugg and his, dressing up as Madonna and singing material girl bet with the other counselor. Um, of course you've got the platoon references with Bundit getting killed and <laughs> a general MacArthur with, with Ugg. Uh, again, I don't think it hit with the nineties kids, but uh, they're fun little uh, Easter eggs in there. Uh, and then having donkey lips come through at the end of the day and win, like it's, it's a feel good for him and it's good to see donkey lips get a win. Uh, yeah. And it's good to see Budnick just be, super mean like it's i i know joey you get to feel uncomfortable but some of his his one-liners and insults um the rhinestone chow boy i, I mean i i wanted to hold back my <laughs> laughter but like just the timing of it is just comedic gold i can't remember i didn't go back and check uh but i want to say this was on my top five for favorite summer episodes it just mm. it really strikes me as a summary fun episode the the yeah. the way the action is filmed is actually really good um this is my if not my favorite pinsky episode like maybe number two i love mm. pinsky in this episode as the guard um and, and and it's kind of like helping donkey lips i think this is the donkey lips episode it has kind of the whole arc of what you would want for his character um yeah, I, I, there's just something so feel good about this episode, and uh, I never really tire of rewatching it. Um, yeah. It has an eight point eight on IMDb, and let's see here, three people picked it as their favorite of the season. Uh, where, where are you guys ranking Capture the Flag? I, you know, it's another episode for me that's along the same lines as Sponge's Night Out, where I just it's very memorable if i was a kid it'd probably be at the top of the list or near it um but on these rewatches i just like it again like felt a little bit slow at the beginning slow to get moving um so i i know i'll get hate for this oh, but i put it at number eight. Oh my oh. god oh <laughs> god andrew did your heart yeah. leave your body this week? <laughs> Again, these are like the most nostalgic episodes yeah. for me, but oh. not necessarily what I think are the most successful episodes in the end. Wow. Um, I should mention also, in case we don't get to it, uh, when Ugg um, is watching the feed of the game and it switches over to the World War II <laughs> footage. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's really great. Um, uh, again though like just to reiterate my top nine i feel like it was it was i was going back and forth like moving things up and down the whole time so i don't know uh, okay 
boy. So this this sat at my number two for a while, um, but just at the very end, uh, uh, probably against what you two would would do with me moving up the Sponge Pincy Gazette. But this ended up at number three for me, four point seven five. One of the best this season. One of the most nostalgic episodes. Um, there's so many small things in here, like this just. An episode like this probably deserves like an episode review. There's just so many little things about it, mm. but uh, but yeah, just just love this episode. Um, and top three for me, so number three. Okay, this is my number two. Uh, definitely, I just love this episode. Um, I kind of already hit on it, but yeah, I think it's the second best after Sponge's Night Out. Then uh, I already talked about my number three with uh, Goodbye, Michael. Um, to me, these three are kind of the trifecta, the 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 greatest hits of season two, and uh, yeah, I love a donkey lip centered story. I think every time they do it, it works. I mean, cheeseburgers in paradise. Uh, this one, I think, I think centering on donkey lips was actually maybe not done enough. There was maybe too much Budnick or too much Dina, but um, yeah, love this episode. Love a good game of Capture the Flag. I mean, I, I haven't played in a long time. And I'm like, well, maybe... I wonder if there's leagues out there. Because I would just love to play mm. some Capture the Flag. Yeah. Um, and and let's, let's just not forget the famous line. Go donkey. Go, go donkey. donkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's um, such a feeling of like being behind Donkey Lips here. You know? Yeah. I'm rooting for, for him. Sure. Uh, I mean, I think those three episodes would be broadly considered like the top three. Yeah. Even though I don't have them. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. W- wait, what? What three episodes? Um, uh, capture see. the flag. Sponge yep. goes to the movies and hello or goodbye, Michael. Hello, Pinsky. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Not, not Sponge Pinsky Gazette. I think that's what you guys might. <laughs> <laughs> not on, not on my watch. Not on my watch. Oh, um, okay. All right, Andrew, which one's next? Okay, uh, next up is Park Ranger Mona, or They Call Me Miss Tibbs. Oh, boy, here he comes. Forest rangers are really tough. Mean, burly guys <laughs> who live in the woods for weeks at a time. Oh, look! <laughs> it's Mona! Wait, I thought she's the mail lady. Mona? It's Mona! My girlfriend! He's a cute. You never changed. <laughs> Greetings, young campers. Mona Tibbs, U.S. Forest Service. Hi, Mona. Hi, Mona. Hi, Mona. Hi, Hi, Mona. Hi. Hi. I'm so glad to see you, my little sweet bread. Oh, oh, I'm touched by the gift counselor. But I've already got government issue boots. Hey, Ugg, that's my other boot handed over. <laughs> She's inspecting us. This is going to make life a little bit easier. Oh, man. Ugg's girlfriend, now a forest ranger, comes to inspect Anawana. Uh, they call me Miss Tibbs or Park, <laughs> Park Ranger Mona. Which one do you like better? Definitely Miss Tibbs. They call me Miss Tibbs. I, sh- shouldn't it be they call me Mr. Tibbs because she says that's what people call her? Uh, <laughs> no. But then, I mean, yeah. Miss Tibbs I mean, is what the episode is, but she says something about like, something does her, does her demeanor make her unfeminine, is I think. Something a lot. I'd screwed yeah. up that line. But, uh... <laughs> let, let me just unload before we say anything. I love Christine Cavanaugh yeah. so much. Yes, sure. she Hands is. Down. She is a dream lady. Agreed. <laughs> um, she, she, like, so I loved this. Again. I loved Pee Wee Herman growing up. Like Pee Wee's Playhouse, my jam. Uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure is like top five favorite movie for me on mm-hmm. rewatchability. Yeah. And she has a lot of that, yeah. her facial expressions and stuff. It, like, it reminds me of Paul Rubens as Pee Wee. And I just, yeah, I fell in love with her. She's just so great. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I, I mean, any episode, like, where you get to spend so much time with her, I yeah. enjoy. Um, a lot of good callbacks in this one to the first time she showed up. Um, I, I do even like the... Uh, the B story in it, uh, the Budnick waffle sculpture. Mm-hmm. Um, and may, probably my favorite moment of this episode is, uh, 
Ugh and Mona's like soot covered kiss at the end of the episode. <laughs> um, I just think they like nailed that. It was like, you know, it's like a cheesy moment, but it's like made so good and memorable by all that soot that's on him. It, it, it's so sloppy and I don't know. Um, so I, I really like it. However, I also think it's um, not, it doesn't quite live up to the, uh, no. her first arrival. No. Um, you know, I, I, I think uh, I like them um, getting on each other's nerves, but it maybe feels a little simple or something like just not quite as full as some other episodes. Mm. But, uh, but anyway, I, I love watching it. I love being with this character. Yeah. So. John. So I would, the only thing I disagree with what you said, Andrew is the storyline with the camper, particularly the garbage one. Like that makes no sense to me. It doesn't really pay off at the end. The fact we get so much Mona makes this episode. I mean, certainly she is the episode, but the the fact she's featured, really the campers don't really do anything for me in this, but because like Mona has so much gravity and like, you just love her and you just want to see her on screen. Like she's just, she's just great. And uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's what made me love this one. I, I wanted like at first I kind of penalized it because I don't feel it involved with campers that well, but I just couldn't get over Mona. I mean, Joey, did you make a list of, of your favorite quotes from Mona? I, I didn't, but uh, if you have some, please share. Okay. Cause you're better than, at this than I am, but here's just a few. Um, my favorite callback was if you remember that and the sponge goes to the movies, his girlfriend Mona couldn't come because she was at a, at an Elvis Presley stamp <laughs> seminar. And then she calls it back here to say, I cherish the post office, but I just couldn't work for an organization that put Elvis Presley on a first class stamp. <laughs> Those are for statesmen, not for people who sing hunk a hunk of burning love. <laughs> uh, then we've got white counselor. You got me roughage looking after my digestion. That is so thoughtful. <laughs> uh, oh, here. Uh, let's see. What do people call you work? They call me Mr. Tibbs. Does that mean being too hard nosed is unfeminine? <laughs> and uh, I've blossomed from an awkward youth into a civil servant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's it's hard. It's a hard. It's the hardest one I think for me to talk about because I love Kavanaugh so much. Her her role as Mona is essential to salute your shorts for me but i don't think this episode even comes close to matching the energy of mail carrier mona um, I agree. and i th i do think they drag on the fighting between them too long yeah. um because they are just so dynamic together i wouldn't mind watching kevin and yeah. Mona happy <laughs> just like yeah. for you know uh, almost an episode where she returns and he's so distracted by her that the kids could almost just run the camp like to me that would be a more interesting storyline or something but mm, um yeah um but it's hard to complain about her returning um for sure i just you know and i do i liked you know if they'd done a season three i liked this idea of maybe each time she comes back of her in a different capacity uh -huh. right so um because doesn't she she yeah, says yeah. what she wants to do next um a departments of weights and measures that's right departments of weights and measures <laughs> with, with the metric system kicking in it should be a time <laughs> of high excitement yeah yeah uh yeah. Th this has an 8.2 on imdb hmm. where'd you guys rank rank this um yeah, I mean, it feels wrong that it's this low, but I put it at number nine. Okay. Um, I, again, like, I love being with her as a character. Um, I just couldn't, you know, I, I just couldn't put it above a lot of these other episodes. Yeah. I mean, I still love it. Like, I really like the episode. Not as much as the original, but, you know. No. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, I, I was just going to say, funny you should say nine. This... This floated between like nine and five for me. Mm. Actually, ended up putting it number five, uh, mainly just because I would rewatch it to see Christine Cavanaugh again. Like yeah. she makes it, 
there's probably other episodes even below it that are better but her performance uh just kind of drew me to it yeah for sure I had this episode lower, so I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna retroactively switch. I'm gonna make. Um, I'm gonna make Telly in the tennis match number eleven. I had it at ten, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna make this ten. I had it mm-hmm. at eleven. Um, it just didn't. I was really think. I think I was just disappointed by it. I didn't remember it all that well, and I rewatched it yesterday, and I felt a little bummed out that it wasn't more uh well executed um so i i I, I, yeah we're on record we love her great character love kevin and mona together are you know i was thinking as i was watching like man they both passed away at this point like that's just the worst but um what a great duo really dynamic Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely yeah uh, one Patreon member picked this as their favorite. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, I mean, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what's next, Andrew? Um, next up is Ellen comes to camp, or oh. the Wrath of Khan Junior. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'd like you to meet Ellen. Hi, Ellen. <laughs> Ellen is Doctor Khan's niece, and she's visiting camp. So what do you say? Let's give her an Anamwana Ricka Chicka cheer. Ricka Chicka Melon, Ricka Chicka Ellen, Ricka Chicka Howdy, Ricka Chicka Hey. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen comes to camp, a spoiled brat who's always found that being the niece of Dr. Khan gives her the license to kill or something like that. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, it said license to ill, but isn't that a Beastie Boys album? <laughs> it is. It's an awesome Beastie Boys album. Um, the Wrath of Khan Jr. or Ellen Comes to Camp. Do you have a preference? Uh, I think I like the Wrath of Khan Jr. Mm. better. I, like I, I like the creativity of it, but it really doesn't have any tie to the episode. Well, Khan. it's just a nice play on of words, I guess. I mean, Dr. Khan, yeah, but it's referencing. That's a Star Trek movie, right? Yeah. Uh yeah, I, I I would go, I would you, the Wrath of Khan Junior sounds like a name the episode. You know what I mean, sure, yeah, yeah. Alan comes to camp, tells us what's happening. Yeah, sure. Um, so either's fine. But uh, what did you make of it, Andrew? Um, I think that this is sort of an under underrated episode. Um, I I think it's like a really well executed one. I like um the the whole setup of Doctor Khan's niece, yeah. like. That's a fun way to start it, I think. Um, there's a lot of like little things I like in this one. I love the Bobby Budnick method. Um, the <laughs> whole the whole storyline with Sponge's train, I think, is just done really well. Like, kind of like the way that it's played out from the beginning of the episode as just a mention to like slowly building to this like final moment. Um, uh, I love all the pranks, of course. Um, I really like how Budnick is the only one that like sees into her mm. game yeah. and like beats her at it, yeah. kind of. Um, uh, I also, I also really like how Ugg kind of gets a win at the end mm. of this one. Yeah, it just like yeah, feels yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, and uh. Also, um, this one's the one that, to me, feels like it had to have been meant as the last episode of the yeah. season. Mm. Um, you know, it just like feels like it's going that way. They say that maybe she's going to be Ellen's going to be back at camp next year, uh, so maybe she's going to yeah. be a new kid. You know, right? Yeah. Um, so I just feel like, as in my mind, a wrap up to the series. It it's it works. Like I really like it. I like. But I really like the idea of like more episodes to come, um, even though they didn't. Uh, it just feels like good to feel like they're still out there at Anawana. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of this one. John? So I watched this episode. It, it was largely forgettable for me. Like, I don't really remember. Like, I remember the concept, but I couldn't tell you much about the episode. 
outside for some reason, like when Telly goes to turn off the train and she like flies through the air, <laughs> like that, that just stands out. Um, I couldn't pinpoint it, but it finally hit me. This feels more like a multi-cam Disney show mm. than it does mm. salute your shorts, especially the, the girl who plays out and I actually think is pretty good, but she's really exaggerated in what she's doing. Yeah. And it just kind of seems like it's a little bit more campy than like salute your shorts typically would be. And I think that's kind of what did it out. Like the Budnick keys to success. Like I would buy that tape. Like <laughs> I, I mean, the way my favorite is probably Penske when he's like real man on camera and like, thanks Budnick. This has changed my life. Like that was just that. That was great. But everything else here, I just the the montage of them trying to catch her again felt over the top, like the girls running into each other and the big net to catch Sponge in. Like it just felt more Disney and less 90s Nickelodeon. And so while there are good parts, just wasn't quite my favorite. And there's a strip. Dr. Khan comes over the intercom on this one at the end. And it doesn't sound like Dr. Khan. It feels like they got someone to substitute. Maybe it is, but I don't think that's Steve mm. Slavkin. Like it sounds totally different. Mm. I missed that. I'd have to go mm. back and back and hear it. Um, This is an episode I felt like I remembered annoying me. but. On rewatch, I liked it. I thought mm. uh, it really incorporates all the campers really well. Um, I, you know, I'm a huge fan of bringing in any outside character into like an established universe. Um, so I love the new I, Jamie Mallet showing up, Thud <laughs> Mackey. You know, give me give me a new kid uh, messing with the dynamics. Uh, I love that. So, Was this part of your inspiration for Little Sibs Day? You know what? It wasn't, uh, but it, it, you know, probably may, maybe subconsciously, uh, okay. you know, that it, it probably worked out a little bit like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I love her. And like you said, Andrew, I love Bud Nick being the one to kind of be like, okay, I know the playbook here. Uh, mm. here, here's how we combat this. Um, and you're right. That ending with Ugg kind of walking away from Dr. Khan's office with, with his bag in his hand, you know, looks like he's yeah. been fired. And then that great twist of like, oh, no, he's like so glad that we shamed her <laughs> that I've been given a day off. And yeah. I, I love the idea that <laughs> may, it never occurred to me that Ugg could just have a day off. Like, do, yes, do, yes. Can, I don't think camp counselors just get days off. <laughs> he, but but he negotiated with Dr. Khan and said a once a month, once every four weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, so uh, this episode has an 8.6 uh, on IMDb. One person did pick it as their favorite of the season. Um, wow. where, where'd you guys rank the uh, Wrath of Connor Ellen comes again? Um, for me, this landed at number two. Wow, um, oh, I, I really love it. I love the whole prank thing, I love the speed of it, uh, or pace. Um, I love the Dr. Khan's niece idea. Um, and most of all, it just feels so optimistic about like this next year, even though again, it didn't happen. Uh, I still love the feel of that. And, um, yeah, I, I think it's just like a really tightly constructed episode. Um, yeah, I, I it's re a really fun one to me. Uh, well, all right, bring the bad news, John. <laughs> I, I hope this doesn't get me banned from the BFC, <laughs> but uh, this ended up being three Krebs stars, number 13 for wow, me. Last, wow, last? Dead, dead last, oh, dead last. Holy <laughs> cow. I mean, <laughs> I can, there are some redeeming things about it. Like, I, again, like with all Salute Your Shorts, like it's better than a lot of nostalgic stuff out there. Like, I love it. This, this series holds a fond place in my heart, but I don't know, like, Ellen was a good Ferguson, like truly the heart of, like you love mm. to hate her. Yeah. But like, mm. I just find her, I just found her grading on me throughout the episode. And again, it just didn't seem in tone with some other, like with other stuff, Salute Your Shorts does. Uh, clearly, I, I, I agree with you, Andrew. I think this was setting, if there's going to be a season three, I think it's probably setting her up to return. But I wouldn't want her to return. She's, uh -huh. she's another exaggerated character. You know, we've got, Budnick bully and you've got everyone else who's kind of plays this role I don't know it just ended up being a little too much for me but again it's not it's not 
a terrible episode. It's just not my favorite of the season. Wow. Well, John, it was nice to have you on at least once. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I, 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 I put this at five. Um, wow. I and I, I think it. It um, is that a oh, wow? You think it's low, Andrew? No, I'm like it, this is one episode that I thought you would rank very low. Oh, okay. For some reason, I, yeah. You know, it's a problem child type thing going on here, which is always fun. I like the antics. And I feel like this season needed, you know, I think I like Capture the Flag and Sponge to the Movies because it's really, it, it's more frantic. And there's a lot of episodes in this season that feel like they just kind of plot along. Mm-hmm. Um, and this doesn't feel like a plotting episode. This feels like an episode yeah. with some urgency. Um, we'll we'll get to a plotting episode uh, in a second here, but um, <laughs> the I, I, I yeah I, I like this one, so I, I gave this a five. Um, yeah, should we round out this season? Yeah, oh, all right. um, <laughs> it is the episode is called Anawana Inc. <laughs> designed to serve a definite need yeah we need money <laughs> we'll get money my future tycoons i give you Anawana incorporated ah it all makes sense now okay uh yeah so while sponge and ugg build a time capsule the rest of the gang start a birdhouse company for career week however they have much to learn about running a business. Do they? So much. Yeah. <laughs> and writing a script. Yeah. Am I right? Jesus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, this is one that again, like I didn't really couldn't remember that much about it going in, but um, and I, I guess you're going to be hard on it, Joe, but I, I enjoyed it. Um, I think it's another episode that like incorporates all the main campers pretty well. I think, um, I like, I like the Ugg and sponge time capsule, even though that could have been maybe a little heavier. Um, I really like, uh, even, you know, even though I don't love the sci-fi like scene cut away thing, um, strange. I do love that picture of Ugg in the background. Yes. <laughs> He's just like smiling so weird. Uh, um, I also, uh, I just kind of like the progression of this episode. Like they're building the, the uh, bird feeders and trying like desperately to figure out how to make this work and like do- throwing donkey lips under the bus, but then donkey lips like completely turning it around on them. Um, so I like him getting a win. I like the whole popsicle thing. More Kent Flankman. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's a pretty fun episode, but maybe not as memorable as some others, possibly. I I think I'm going to show a little bit of bias here because I was listening to a podcast that Michael Ray Bauer did a couple years ago. And he mm. said that this was his favorite episode Whoa. Um, yeah. because it was one where like donkey lips, like gets a real victory, right? Like yeah. talking about a business and he wins and he says that this was, was, was one of his favorites. And because I like him so much, I think it biased me a little bit. I would agree though. It was a little bit harder of a watch. It's member. I like, I remember this concept and in my mind, this episode was better than it actually was. Mm. That whole Star Trek future sequence seemed really out of place. Yeah. The, the picture of Ugg, though, you nailed it. Like, I I love that. Um, I also love, like, the links they go to in this series to not pay kid actors for speaking lines. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesse Bartlett doesn't say a word. And you think of uh, Sponge Goes to the Movies, the concession lady, and yeah. uh, Pinsky's date. Like, she's given these... these, these um, uh, like she's shrugging her shoulders, put arms out, but she doesn't say a single word. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like it just doesn't, the whole, the whole time capsule, uh, s- storyline, like doesn't hit home either. Um, so it was, it was good. Like my heart is with donkey lips. Like 
he truly gets a win out of this. Um, it, it kind of the true character of some of all the others and how they treat donkey lips really comes out. And, you know, I, I think what you called out at the very beginning of this joy, like donkey lips finally finds a group that like respect him yeah. and like him yeah. and he walks away with them. And, and that's, that's heartwarming to see too. Um, but, uh, yeah, as a whole, it's certainly not my favorite it has a lot of flaws, but because Michael Ray Bauer loves this one, I did give it a little bump. Mm. I mean, this episode felt like it took two hours to watch. It was, <laughs> I, 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 there was a point where I'm like, is this an extended episode? This feels like it's taking forever. Uh, the alien sequence is just so not in line with salute your shorts. And I love, listen, I love aliens. I love sci-fi, sure. uh, but it felt not in sync. And I just, there was no part of the story that I felt super invested in until it started taking a look at donkey lips. Um, mm. Yeah. I think this is a bad one guys. Oh, I think, boy. I think, I think yeah. Michael Ray Bauer for all the right he's done in his life is wrong on this. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I ask you like, if you had watched this like late into a watched like a long watching session i've tried to watch this one multiple times over the years okay yeah. I, I i spread out these watches over like a couple of weeks so yeah. i wasn't like it wasn't like i got to the end it's like oh get this over like no yeah, yeah, yeah. no the last time i watched it was yesterday at 4 30 p.m so okay i mean there literally was not an episode in this series really that didn't suck me in immediately mm. as far as like these shows go like there's not one episode that i would be upset about rewatching. Mm. okay um but what about that uh picture of Ugg? yeah it's pretty good then, it's pretty good okay. <laughs> no 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 major complaints there um yeah okay well nobody on patreon picked this as their favorite mm -hmm. it has a 8.2 on imdb what did you give on Awana incorporated um, it landed for me exactly in the middle of my list at number seven. Okay. Um, you know, I, again, like I like the kind of frenetic energy. Um, and I like that, uh, donkey Kong, uh, don <laughs> <laughs> I like that donkey lifts got to win. Yeah. Um, but, uh, also it's not, it's just like not the most memorable episode, not a ton of, um, other things that I love about it, I guess. Mm. It feels like a good middle to me. John? Yeah, so I gave this one a 3.75, ended up at number nine on my list. Uh, I mean, to me, Ugg actually is like, if you're going to pick a winner for this episode, like Ugg is it. He, he takes the doll from that girl and makes her cry. And Ugg making girls cry is just funny. <laughs> um, the other thing is when they're putting stuff in the time capsule and he goes, imagine the face on a future counselor when he sees this. It'll be like, Whoa, <laughs> that is a great line. Yes. Um, so, so, so yeah, I mean, definitely not the strongest. It's on the cusp of rewatchability for me, but um, yeah, it's settled in at number nine. Right. Uh, this is the, this is the worst episode of the season. It's uh, number 13 for me. It's yeah, it's, it's just a kind of a mess. It's not really compelling. It, it reminds me a lot of the Pinsky Sponge Gazette, Gazette. It's just there's not there's not enough to get excited about here. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but let's recap with the positive. Will you give your top three? What are your top three from the f season? Um, mine are at three: the man who would be a uh, two is the wrath of Khan and Khan Junior, and one is uh, good by Michael. Hello, Pinsky. Man, I think I think the wrath of Khan Junior is the surprise there. Um, mm -hmm. Not that I disagree; yeah, I, I ended up liking it. But uh, <laughs> sorry, John. Uh, but um, very very shocking. I would not have guessed. Yeah. That. John, your top three. Yeah, so my number three was Capture the Flag. Number two was The Great Penske Sponge Gazette. And number one, Sponge Goes to the Movies. Wow. Okay. Okay. I mean, you guys just love that Penske Sponge Gazette. I'm just... <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> my number three was Goodbye, Michael. Hello, Penske. My number two was Capture the Flag. And my number one was Sponge Goes to the Movies. Um... 
Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I mean, we did deviate more than I thought we might. Yeah. Yeah. We, I, I, yeah. Go ahead. I put it in, in tiers, and I thought, okay, this is like the top two tiers. We're all going to have the same. And maybe that just depends. Be, be, it seems like season one episodes, at least in my mind, were like replayed more, mm. like on Nick in mm-hmm. the Afternoon yeah. and stuff. And maybe it's just when you caught and sort of the nostalgia, like yeah. being on the rock star. I mean, Joey, you, you have that link to music in general, but like it could just be kind of what you really held on to. For sure. To, yeah. You know, makes I mean, we know Sponge goes to movies and kept a flag. I think we can. That's all in our top three. I think we can all agree. It's it's those are the two best. Well, not for Andrew. You know, in general, season two. Uh, oh, no, neither of those were in my top three. Oh, neither. I, I, I thought you I said captured the fly. Oh no, that's right. Yeah, you killed yeah. us with Sponge Goes to the Movie. Yeah, I. <laughs> oh. I, I, I would I just, be surprised though if those are like again like the all the broad top three amongst fans. Yeah. I just tried to repress that memory. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, ca- capture the flag at eight is. <sighs> you know, I don't know. What can I say? Yeah. No, you don't have to say anything. It's I'm processing. Yeah. I'm processing. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, no, but I I think. I still hold kind of what I started with here. I think it's a more inconsistent season. I think yeah. it has a bunch of great storylines, but overall the episodes are just not as zoned in uh, as the first season. And there's, I'm sure a lot of reasons for that, but um, there are some, yeah. there are some really, you know, I, great ones here. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be without them either. Right, right. In, in, yeah. Yeah. In terms of the series. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, well, that was, whew, that was good. A journey, but I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. glad we, we did it for sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. <laughs> John, you feeling good? It's fun. I'm feeling great. Like, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for letting me part, be part of this journey with you. Yeah. Like it, uh, again, I know I offended you a couple of times with my choices, but, <laughs> well, I think uh, all, you know, everybody had yeah. some choices yeah. that yeah. were controversial. Yeah. 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 Very controversial. Probably your most controversial podcast. <laughs> Did you listen to uh, Last Dance, John? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, that's Patreon. Patreon's oh. on another level, man. <laughs> so I, I, I listened to that episode while I was in uh, Austria. We, we went on a little trip. Oh, cool. And uh, yeah, it was a nice listen, like as I wanted to kick back one night in a random hotel in Austria. Boy, that, that definitely went off the rails <laughs> for sure. But I loved it. It was, and Vaughn, like you couldn't have had a better guest than Vaughn on that one. Like, you, like it was just so good. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of which, I, I meant I meant to do this earlier. I, I do want to shout out all of our uh, supporters on Patreon. That includes you, John. We're, we we uh, are so grateful to have people like you supporting us. Um, and, and for those, because this this one will be in the regular yes, feed, right? Right, right. So I'm going to give a plug for Patreon. Like as I mentioned, I've been a passive listener. Like you guys are awesome. Like I, I mean, this is such a treat for me to be on, but. I feel like the engagement on the Patreon community is like real. Yeah. And I feel that's where I feel I'll jump in. Like I have a Twitter account, but it's more for monitoring right. than engaging. But Patreon's a lot of fun to be a part of. So, I mean, even if it's just at the Gary tier, jump in just for the conversation alone. It's worth it. Well, thank you. Appreciate yes. that. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you to Alyssa, Allie, Justin, Brad, Brian, Bup, Chris, Clayton, you, John, Joseph, Katie, Mort, Scott, Scrump, Giant, Shay, Tim, Vaughn, Ashley, Bob, Kevin, Brooks, Colin, Corey, Damian, Evelyn, Honest Abe, Jason, Jennifer, Jim, Jordan, Joshua, Justin, Katie, Kev, Lacey, Leah, Mark, Marlena, Nick, Nikki, Samantha, Sean, Shelby, Sid, Tara, Ted, Tim, Tony, Vincenzo, and Zach. Uh, it's it's a uh, I we've mentioned it, but I feel like doing this has kind of re-energized. Uh, at least that's how I feel. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, nice. Andrew, what are we talking about next time? Um, next we're going to be talking Rugrats, Nakey Tommy. <laughs> Yeah, Nike Tommy. <laughs> uh, uh, that is that is absolutely classic Nickelodeon jargon. Yeah. Nike. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That'll be with uh, another Patreon supporter, Joseph. Um, so that'll be fun. And on Patreon, we have our our we just did um, our not quite Nick Snick tape, 
which was really, really fun. Uh, I'm still kind of thinking about your lineups. Um, mm-hmm. They're interesting. And then, uh, mm-hmm. and then next up we have snow day. We haven't recorded that yet, but we're going to be talking snow day with Clayton, um, which will be really cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to get a hold of us, we're on Twitter at BOC Podcast, Instagram at Orange Couch Podcast. You can find us, uh, or you can email us at Orange Couch Podcast at gmail dot com. And we are on uh, everything: uh, Apple, Spotify, Podbean, uh, Patreon. Uh, we any any way you can support us is is cool. Feels good um and uh speaking of supporting john uh again thank you for bringing us this idea was super excited the second i saw it and um thank you for being thoughtful and i I really enjoyed hearing your thoughts on it hey thank you guys and i mean for for any of the blake senate fans out there please go check out rilo kiley and the elected yeah um the elected is his side project rilo kiley's great yeah um maybe at the very end i'll share my top songs but um what i will say there's also a great interview on the boy meets world podcast i don't really listen to it but they did an interview with blake Sennett, hmm. and like he's a totally different guy like he sells real estate in nashville whoa and he's like uh-huh. yeah he's like gone through this arc of i mean he mentions it he mentions coming off acting he almost committed suicide whoa. and then he decided to go into music and he loved it but he kind of trying to balance a family was tough for him and so yeah. now he's you know, he owns real estate properties in Nashville and he's like at this different phase. It's really cool to listen to. So go find that on the, it's the, like the uh, one hosted by the former boy meets world cast. Um, but go seek that out. Did, really cool. Listen. Am I wrong? Did he date Winona Ryder? He did. Yep. He did date and Jenny Lewis too. Jesus. The man's <laughs> the man is living all of our best lives. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Well, yes. Uh, well, you know, before we go, I I am interested in your Rilo Kylie five. What what do you got? Okay, so so I ended up doing a mix because I I mean I love Rilo Kylie, but since season two's Penske focus, I chose my top five songs where Blake's in it as the lead sing- lead vocals. Ooh, on it. okay. So um, number one would be August from Takeoffs and Landings. Mm-hmm. Um, just like really chill song, beautiful song. Um, so it's kind of weird. Like I got pulled into Rilo Kylie. I had a cousin who followed him early to the point where he would go to their concerts and then just go back, like help them pack up their stuff yeah. afterwards and sit down and chat with them. And uh, just really cool experiences. Uh, but takeoffs and landings has a special place in my heart. And I think possibly because like he sings it and you're like, that's Pinsky. Like, that's so cool. Yeah. Like that's the first time I heard it. So that would be number one for me. Uh, Number two would be Would You Come With Me off the Me First album from The Elected. Uh, the fact, it was really the first album where I heard lap steel that wasn't like a true country album. Mm. It's like, whoa, like rock and lap steel guitar. Like this is this is so cool. Um, anyway, I love that album. Number three would be Ripcord. That's uh, off Mort Ventress, I believe. That's his tribute to Elliot Smith. Mm. I think they opened for him before he passed away. Uh, and I think I think... Blake Sinnott sang this at uh, a tribute concert for him, but just a, a really raw song, just Blake on a guitar. Yeah. Um, Go On from the, ele- from the Elected. That's off the Me First album. Oh, I screwed it up earlier. Would You Come With Me was from Sun, Sun, Sun. Go On is from the Me First album, the first release. Uh, just a really, really great song. That's the one that is the lap steel. Hmm. And then number five, more of a sentimental pick. My wife and I, have totally opposite tastes in music um i've i grew up i I was mainly like indie rock in college and she was like pop country yeah but when we had like the wedding video made i got her to put beautiful rainbow by the elected on there Mm. um and it was like a total win for me yeah but uh again really nice song um i just the sun 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 album yes like i don't know why it gets me but it just like tells a story like throughout the whole thing and i just I've listened to that album so many times. Like, I love it. Yeah. I, I'll co sign the elected Sun, 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 um, Not Going Home. Uh, yeah. Fireflies in a Steel Mill were, were two of my favorites from that one. Um, yeah. He's Bank and Trust. Oh, yeah. 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 He's a really talented guy. And uh, 
I'm glad to hear he's kind of made it through, but I would have never guessed yeah. real estate. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> no, no, he like manages properties yeah. in Nashville. But uh, yeah, I couldn't find him for the longest time because I would like occasionally, like I saw Jenny Lewis and the Watson twins when they, they came through my town and like that was an amazing experience. And I'm like, you know, I love to, I never listened to what, Night Tears of 1927, mm-hmm. I think his final. Yeah. But I'm like, if he comes through, I'll see him. And then he never did. And then I just came across this recently. So, gotcha. Really, really interesting guy. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, well, really a, a lot to go through. A really fun episode, though. Um, love revisiting um, so your shorts and so glad you could join us, John. And you're so enthusiastic about it. And, um we hope uh, we'll see all you returning campers next episode. Cause I seen a rainbow Not burn my old house down I'd get tattooed I'd do whatever I had to do And if the sky filled up with clouds of doom And the whole So uh, this episode here, Budnick has found the legendary Cursed Skull, while the boys form a secret society. The camp falls victim to a wave of inex- inexplicable, yeah. Inex- <laughs> inexplicable. <laughs> Let me try this again. Budnick has found the legendary Cursed Skull, while the boys form a secret society. Camp falls victim to a wave of inex- inexplicable. <laughs> God. D- <laughs> uh, all right he watched this this is this is how you do it 